Happy. Any questions? Negative. Welcome to HR. Thanks, bud. <laughs> <laughs> the enthusiasm. Right. There, there goes my life. Right. You were saying, <laughs> am I going to queue you? Am I going to queue you up for anything? I said, no, I'll start you off. That's about it. When were you born? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, bud. Thanks. No, I got a question. So on the train, you said to me on the, on the message on the train on the way up, you were feeling slightly emotional about coming on. And, um, and I said, that's a bit gay. I was joking, obviously. Why? Why you, uh, why, um, why were you feeling like that on the way up here? Do you know what, mate? Because, fuck me, there's been a lot gone on and it just feels, yeah, you can talk to people and shit like that's different, but like this feels a lot more, I can get a lot more off my chest and it's, it's really opening myself up. Why, why is that compared to talking oh. to friends or family? I don't know. I don't know. Is the mate honestly can't put a thing on it. It just feels like it wasn't. I wasn't emotional as in well, I was, but not as in like fuck and shit myself or anything like. It was like happiness. Like I'm finally gonna talk about everything that I fucking got bottled up. I can't talk to fucking. You know what blokes are like. Like okay, let's talk about let's talk about fucking the army shit. Who do you talk to? Other squaddies. You can't talk about your parents to anything. You can't talk really about to your parents about anything. You can't fucking a chick. You know none of that shit. Like I feel like this is a good environment, and it's going out to the right people, and it just feels good. Oh, good mate. Good. I'm glad. I I, I know what you mean. Um, it's a hard one. To, it's a hard thing to to say. Do you know what I mean? What do you mean? Oh, to explain. To, to, to explain it, yeah. Oh, well, no, I, I put it like this. Mate, would you... Uh, it, it's different. People, so if you're sitting there having a chin wag with someone, yeah. it's very unlikely that they're going to want to sit there and pin their ears back for two hours. Exactly. And talk, because people are people, right? Mm-hmm. But um, I do. <laughs> I'll <laughs> do it, mate. This guy with his <laughs> shit dicks again. <laughs> Fuck. I, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. This is what this is for, you know. Uh, it's, um, I think, that... This is why it started. It's like, I think everyone is, I, I truly believe, it. well, you know, we know everyone's unique and I think everyone, everyone has got a story to tell. Whether they want to tell it is another thing or not. And I think everyone has got like experience and insights in their lives that could definitely help others if exactly. others could hear it. Exactly. That's exactly, exactly what it, is. it. And, and most people don't get a chance to tell it. Yeah. Most people don't want to say it, right? And some people. Or they're too ashamed to say it. Or too ashamed to say it, yeah. Or don't realize his value in what they've got in their past. Yeah. yeah, and some people's pasts are more valuable to others than other people. Horses right? for courses. Anyway, here we are. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, where do you want to start, mate? You've had a, you know, I know, I know the, I know the main pieces. But where do you want to start with this? Like, you, you were saying earlier on the icebreaker. I think on the icebreaker, maybe even been off air. They, I was talking about Krish. Mm. I think it was off air. You know, you, you had a, you feel like you're at a sort of a spiritual, spiritual turning point. Awakening. Maybe in your mindset, awakening. Awakening. Oh, that's a strong way to put it. Sexual. Are you going down the Chris Snapper route of like full blown monk? No. But I, but, but I have done, I'm like, I've started to do meditation and I've started to. What's changed? I don't know, right? Just, just something's come over me. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to do black bearing. I've got to do it all. It's something in here is telling me to do it. It's fucked up and I can't put my finger on it. But right now, right, this sounds really fucking fluffy and a bit Webster's. But from childhood all the way to, I don't know, maybe six months ago. Life's been up and down. I'm sure other people are exactly the same. I f- really feel why I'm here today now telling my story for people that are going to potentially relate to it and what I'm doing with Black Bearing. I'm here for a reason and everything that I've done, good and bad, has led me to this point to do what I'm going to start doing now. It's weird. So I think my life's been... There's, no, a re- makes total there's, sense. A, there's a reason why I've done this. There's a reason why I fucked up here. There's a reason why I've done good here. And it's all led me to this point now, here with you, and doing like Black Bear and stuff like that. 
Okay, I got a question then. Why did you end up in jail? What brought you to that point? Uh, wrong crowd. Which time? Was it, oh really? Yeah. All right. Well, so if when it, did you leave? The, who did you serve with? Rifles. When did you leave? 2012. When did you get in? 2000. No, sorry. Yeah, 2000. 2004. Four to twelve. Yeah. Tasty time. Tasty eight years. So that would have been so two tours. Telic eight, which was fruity. Eighteen years old. Like what the fuck is this shit? Mm. Remember that helicopter that crashed? The Lynx? Oh, yeah. First vehicle down that fucking road. Yeah. Good day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a good day. But no, it wasn't. It wasn't a good day. It was a fucking... <laughs> it was a shit day. But, like, as soldiering goes, like, fuck. Yeah. I think Telecate, and we're based at the OSB. Mm-hmm. So it was fruity anyway. OSB. OSB. Yeah, it was like dead centre in Basra. Oh, right. So I didn't know what you meant when you said so, it. Yeah, old, I, I was thinking Shiba Log Base. I think that's how they... No, um... Old State Building. So it's okay. down the road from... Are they called TSU? Is it TSU? You know the Iraqi fucking police that people thought they were Gucci, but they weren't Gucci? Oh, right, yeah. It I was can't just down the road from there. Yeah. It's basically a little company-strong base. So what year was that? 2006. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there were tasty times. And the other thing about that time was... Um, it was uh, super tasty out there for those few years... Uh, but um, no one would have realised because Afghan was gone on at the same time. It sort of took all the light away from it. I don't mean yep. the lights; the wrong, it's the wrong impression. Well, it gave just, a mis- misleading, uh, in, uh, misleading impression. It's of, two um, different, how quiet two was. different, yeah, two different things. Yeah. Two different, like you know, it's completely. You have, I, I, was, I didn't do Afghan, but I'm guessing it was more. You know, fucking. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It was just two different sorts of fighting, wasn't it? Really? Conventional. Well, that's the word conventional. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Coin. My fucking barely even that. It's about times. And yeah. Afghan was more, like, well, conventional mix of coin, depending on where you were and what you were doing. But, um, and two different, entirely different countries, entirely mm. different people, with entirely different reasons for being in shit state. Yeah. Although the common denominator was they're in shit state because of the West. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Woo! We fucked up another yeah, country. Yeah. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Make the Middle East great again. That's what we're going to do. Jesus. Um, all right. So, 2008. And then you got out, what? 2012? 2016? 2016. No, 2012 I got out. Oh, you got out the year after me. Yeah, I got out September 2011. Yeah. 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 Not under the best light, but yeah. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Want to talk about it? Yeah, yeah, okay, right. So, um, so I mentioned about my grandfather mm-hmm. being a bit of a fucking some boy back in the day. Um, he on the icebreaker, you mentioned that for people who were wondering if they've missed a chunk of this podcast. You haven't, you haven't listened to the icebreaker, Roger. Yeah. So, um, he had just fell quite ill, and I was getting to that point where I knew what he, I knew what he kind of did back in the day, and then. But it was never really spoken about. And then, as I was getting older, and uh, I think I was in, I was in sniper platoon at the time, so like my keen head was on then. And I was like, oh, I really want you know this this guy. I, I need to ask him questions. Like I want to find out more about him and what he used to do. And then he fell ill, and at that point, I was in a really toxic, horrible relationship. And you know what? Fucking sometimes they get out, they go, come out, oh, you know, sign off. Oh, you have this amazing life with me. And, <laughs> mm. and um, basically, I ended up going home. Um, had some, um, what's the word? Not R and R. What's the word? When they're really Ill. compassionate, compassionate. And I was like, look, compassionately. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then he, like, the dude was fucked, like cabbage, pretty much, and. I was he like, had a stroke or something, did he? No, he was. Um, he had. He fell over in, in the back garden, cracked his head on. You know, oh, the dude was old. He cracked his head on concrete, and then like instant dementia, like really setting very quickly. But the guy was like, mate, when I went to the old folks' home or whatever, he was there to basically die. I was pushing around in a wheelchair, and like there'd be like a heli flyover, and we like get me back in, like get me back in, like it, it, his head fucking spammy. Didn't even know it was me half the time. So I wanted to be there for him before he died. And obviously Battalion, being top blokes, were like, um, nope, 
come back to Germany. I'm like, well, I've signed. And at this point, I'd signed off. Because he was an immediate family, right? Yeah. yeah. And like at that point, I'd signed off anyway. Oh, right. Yeah. Like, what the fuck am I doing going back to Germany? And then they went, they put me from, I was, so, I was in the platoon, and then they stuck me into fucking CQMS. So I was like, fucking hero to zero, like really quick. I was like, this is fucking shit. I was like, why am I coming back? And just to sit in the stores. So basically I went, yeah, shove, shove it up your ass, pop smoke. Why well, just bend it with AWOL? Just bend AWOL, yeah. Big finger. And then they came and got me. Um, did they come and get me? No. I, um, I got in a scrap and then I was held. They found out that obviously I was fucking AWOL. Um, and then they sent two, two fucking, well, the provost staff sent two of the provost staff from Germany to come and grab me. Mm. So I had to wait in Launceston Police Station in Cornwall. And, uh, they came, like, I was there for like a day, day and a half where they came and got me. And they're like, come on then. They sat me in the back of the car, drove me back to camp, got on the 303. And there was a, they stopped for, a, uh, get some fuel. One went for a shit. And the other one went to go and pay the fuel. And, um, I just went, right, sod this, I'm off. Later's giving it swastikas down the fucking free Fuck that again. Yeah. How did that work out for you? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I went back home. <laughs> Honestly, I hitchhiked all the way home, mate. Got I got home, got a lift from a trucker. It was quite funny, really, because I was in boardies and flip flops, and we're from the three hundred three. And I remember there was like a a field, and it had like long, tall. It, was, it might have been corn or fucking something like that. So, just on my ones, and they come and got me. I was in the bath. Uh, at home, and I had the wi- I had, had the window open. I had a diesel car come up the driveway. I was like, babe, babe, have a look at which. Oh, it's fucking the old bill. It's the old bill. And that was it. I jumped out the fucking bath, ran into the walk-in wardrobe, and I sat there like that, completely starco. And then I heard her trying to um, basically square it away and fuck him off. And they had to come in and check the house. As he came up, he goes, "Oh, some wet footprints here on the carpet." Ground sign. Fuck you, cunt. <laughs> Okay. Open up the wardrobe and there I was he fucking handcuffed me start bollico you were never going to get away with it if you were staying in the UK no no hindsight yeah <laughs> no, hindsight <laughs> but then went to Collie and um 57 days and then sold her out yeah what did you think of your time in the glass house do you know what it was actually a fucking doddle <laughs> I heard this, mate. You, I know so, someone who went there and preferred it to battalion. He wasn't treated well in battalion because he was a belter. But I know he went to glass house. Mate, he was like, this, Mega, this, I don't, don't ever want to leave. Mate, they, uh, it's not really a jail. You can just walk out whenever you want. There was a story. There was a geezer. Because all the screws and that cut around one push bikes or whatever, just like in camp. Okay. And I heard a story that was this geezer. And he was like, boop, boop, boop. See you in the morning, mate. Barrier went up. See you in the morning. Yeah, see you in a bit. Cycled off down the road. <laughs> Do you know why it's called the glass house? No. Um, so for people listening, they're like, what the fuck are you on about? This is a military prison. The, the, the military... Oh, hang on a minute. It's not called the military prison. It's called Co- the military correctional, correctional training f- facility. Yeah, right? So on. right? Yeah. Or corrective training facility. But it's, it's the military jail. It's in Colchester. That's the only one. It's in Colchester, isn't it, I think? Yeah, it's the only jail, mate. Yeah. And uh, it's called the glass house because back in the Dizze, yeah. the, the original prison was made out of uh, the blocks, the the billets were were basically, they're like, they're like you've been to Bryce Norton and seen the, the spider block, oh, you've been, you'll have been to uh, Perb, right, mm-hmm. and seen the, the yeah. like the hot, yeah. corrugated iron yeah. roofs, yeah. The, the prison used to be that, and in the summer, yeah. they would get as hot as a glass house, so it's called the glass house, military Corrective training facility, the glass house. So it was actually, like yeah. It was never glass. It was just hot as a fucking, hot as a glass house. Hot as a greenhouse. Um, okay, 57 days in there. And then what's that? It's dishonorable discharge. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? Um, if I'm honest, mate, <clears throat> that toxic relationship was filled with drugs, alcohol, complete fucking carnage, mate. Down in Cornwall. Down in Cornwall, mate. No surfing. Oh, mm, mate, I can surf. A, no, people will be like, James, you can't fucking surf. You're turning the fucking porky yeah. here, mate. No surfing, just pirates. I can fucking get on the board. I can go, mate. That's about <laughs> it, bro. Um, no, and I, um, and I'm sure, you know, I've got no shame saying anything. There'll be blokes that are watching this that are 
probably in the same situation now. I made a silly mistake um, in this horrible relationship. Um, and then a push can result to an ABH charge. As, as easy as that. As easy as that. Shoved her. Yeah. 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 Trying to leave the house. Trying to get away. Berg impact. You know the old black grips we used to get? Mm-hmm. One of them packed. Everything ready to go. Wouldn't let me leave. Yeah. Shoved her out the way and she called us home. Mm-hmm. And then she locked me in the house. And she locked you in the house. And she locked me in the house. Stole my car as well. Yeah. She locked you in the house. Stole the car. Oh, yeah. and then told the Yeah, because I lived in the middle of fucking nowhere as well. Mm. I was like, mum, come and get me. Yeah. So what? how did that... Why couldn't you get away with that if you, if you, if you were trying to leave the house and she was trying to keep you in? What was it? A, um, she just didn't want me to leave, mate. No, I mean, from the investigation perspective, was that a he says, she says? Oh, mate, it? honestly, I could go in on this go big on, time. Go in on it. So they fucking... What was it? I've got no faith. Given, like, some of the police... All right, this, I know some of them, they're really good guys or whatever. But I think once you've got a target on your back... That's it. It doesn't matter who you fucking are. They will fuck you over. And I've seen it done. I've been in the cop shop at, at the time and they're literally saying they need to forge the paperwork or something like that to try and keep me in longer. I've seen it. 100%. It's bent as fuck. When you turn around to a police officer that's interviewing you and you're like, there's my fingernails. Take samples from underneath my fingers and see if I fucking did what you say, you know, that's been done. And they won't do it because you, then you know you're telling the truth. May have nuts. Yeah, the, I could go in on this all day the, long. The law, one of the things that, and, and uh, there's some people listening to this who won't, won't like to hear this, but one of the things that's been proven time and time again, and and one of the main sources of info you can go to this is is a is a person, is an individual called the secret barrister. You ever heard of the secret barrister? No. The secret barrister, um, by all accounts, is a bit of a bell end in real life. I never <laughs> met the person, but I I read the first book and it. I, it I can't remember what it was called. I think it was just called The Secret Barrister. And the book was basically about everything that's wrong with the British justice system. And I read this book and I, I was frightening. And it literally, the main advice from it is do everything you can to avoid getting arrest, arrested in your life. Even if it, 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 it's like even accidental arrest because the odds are stacked against you. Mm-hmm. They're stacked against you. It, it, the the probability of you, if you're accidentally arrested, the probability is much higher than what you think of you being charged with something, even if it's an accidental arrest. Like, yep. I'm not saying the probability is 60%. I'm mm-hmm. saying it's probably a small number that's higher than what you think. And also um, that the justice system is pretty heavily uh, um, sexist, favoured in, in favor towards women. Do you know what now, people well? don't like hearing this and... and I give you I give you an example of this, a real life example from a friend of mine hmm. who's also a podcast listener. And he he had a similar thing, he was in a toxic relationship and uh, he went to go to the ex's now now ex place hmm. of work to he was getting something from there, he was purchasing something from her. It was a basically a piece of furniture. Mm-hmm. She didn't want he was setting up a new business, he was going there to collect it. He went in there and, and and she didn't had never wanted the relationship to end and he was having he had problems yep. ending the relationship. Yep. And uh he went there. They ended up in an argument because she started going at him and they were arguing about whatever. Now don't, don't get me wrong, he isn't the coolest head. But no. he went in there to get the piece, she started kicking off. Mm-hmm. Um I think there was so she I don't know, it was something to do with the furniture as well. She wanted not more money, but she wanted like Payment of cash into a bank or something like this. An argument, oh, funny an that, argument ensued. On, not traceable either. I don't, yeah, I don't know what it was. Funny but that. An argument ensued, and he he stormed out. And as he went out, in like spite, mm. this is he. I want. I don't want to say what the shop was, but he basically knocked deliberately, accidentally, deliberately knocked one of the products yeah. off a shelf on the floor, like yeah. like a fuck you as he walked out. Yeah. And she went berserk, mate. Mm-hmm. She came at him with a sharp thing. I don't want to say what the sharp thing is to give away what the shop was. In fact, I'll say it. It was a pair of fucking secateurs, mate. 
he she came out with a pair of secateurs and stabbed him in the thigh with the secateurs. I mean, like <laughs> the force it takes, the force it takes to penetrate the skin with a pair of secateurs, right? Because they're not the sharpest thing unless no. they're open, right? Sharp. She stabs him in the leg with a pair of secateurs. You're talking like the big fucking chunky things. <laughs> no, no, secateurs. Little, oh, little, you, like you pruning, pruning things. You pruning. Yeah, well, that's yeah. even worse because they're not. They're not even like stabbed a stabby him in stabby. The thigh with secateurs, right? He's like fucking hell. He ends. He's outside now on the sitting on the sitting on the curb <laughs> of the thing because he can't walk. There's blood everywhere. She rings the police because he's there now. Listen to this. She rings the police, calls the police, says you need to get you. He's hit me. Right. <laughs> and as he was telling me this on the phone, I said to him, "Mate, didn't it? Did you?" And he went fucking berserk. You fucking asshole! I fucking did. I never hit a woman. He said. He said if I did, and he's he's a unit, right? He said, if I had hear her, yeah. she wouldn't be able to make a phone Jaw call. Jaw be swinging. Right? So she makes the phone call for the police. Yeah. Right? Calls the police. Then she toddles out to make a delivery of a thing that she was going to... Do. Obviously, secateurs. You know what kind of a shop it was. Yeah. She went to make a delivery. This woman who allegedly just been punched by a guy who was like 18 stone. Right? Goes out. She comes back. Police come in. My mate's like... Uh, she stabbed me in the leg. I yeah. haven't hit her. They lifted him. Bear in mind, he's got literally a stab wound. They lift him, chuck him in jail. Don't didn't do anything with her. They didn't do anything with her. They did not arrest her. Arrested him, took him. And in the follow-on, there happens to be a third party who works there who who was out the back and had come through in the argument started and saw that he never hit her and saw that she had stabbed him and was able to vouch vouch for him. But at that point. He was on bail. Yeah. The court, the the court thing is start like the um the process, not the court thing. The process is start for the investigation, and um, in the end, she ended up dropping the dropping the charge mm. because the transpire she had a history of it, history of doing this to past past uh, boyfriends. You basically. know what? My but point is, he stabbed in the leg of sitting on the curb. Yeah, she's allegedly he's allegedly hit her. She's told about not a mark on her. Yeah, and they lifted him and not her. And it's, it's this is like this is common knowledge among people like blokes especially who've been the victim of this kind of thing because it's not just on the criminal side it's on the civil side as well yeah. where family's concerned it's yeah. shocking it's real bad and uh, I know if there's ladies listen to this and I know, I know you won't like hearing it however I do know there's ladies listen to this that are in the legal legal profession and they will know absolutely agree with me bang on hundred percent now don't get me wrong blokes often bring it on themselves. <laughs> 100%. It's like, don't end up in that situation in the first place. So, I think at 36 now, right, I've only just got into my head, short skirts and high heels are a no-go for me. Well, oh, and big fake tits, and that is it. Like, I've got to stay well clear because, you know, that's it. I need a nice homely girl that just reads the Bible maybe every evening. That's what I need. Oh, I don't know about that. So, anyway, the... Um, so, I go to court. <laughs> Sorry for that. Jeez. That's right. That's a good dip. Yeah. <laughs> um, went to court, and and this is fucked. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Sorry, they didn't take him straight. To the, they didn't take him straight to the prison. They took they, they took him to they took him to uh, sorry they took him to the police station. I've just remembered the rest of it. They took him to the police station. The custody officer is that what it's called in yeah. the police station. It was yeah. like, uh, why have you brought him here? He's got a stab wound. Hospital. Yeah. So they took him to the hospital. He was twenty four or forty eight hours in the hospital. That's where he rang me from. Yeah. When he told me about it, he was in there at the hospital, police guard, and then as soon as they sewed him up and gave him all the antibiotics because of the infection, then they took him to back to the police station. It's fucked up. <laughs> like, you get, get in that cell. The thing is, people be hearing this and they'll be like, fuck off. Like, it, it, legit. Yeah. Legit. Um, and that's what annoys me. Like, you get these people that cut around now and they just live, oh, the police will protect us. And it's, yeah, all right, okay, to a certain extent, yes, okay, not knocking anyone that's old Bill or anything like that. But there is that element where I think whatever the phase is, whatever the trend is at the moment, like they will massively like go down that rabbit hole and they just, they just, just to get a fucking win. They don't care. So when I went to court, um, I pleaded guilty to ABH. A load of other stuff got dropped. Funny that, because it was all bullshit. Could you not plead self-defense? Or you being no, imprisoned against your Because at that point, mate, there was loads of stuff that got brought up and it all got dropped. So I was just like, you know when you're tired of fighting and you're just tired and whatever, I just like, do you know what? Yeah, I did. Was I that did the advice from the solicitor as well? Yeah. And I was just like, look, I did do it. And I did. I'm not going to lie. I did do it. So, yeah. All right. Fair play. 
ABH. Lovely job. Went to court. This judge is renowned in Cornwall, and I'm not going to say his name, but if anyone's from Cornwall, fucking know straight away. <laughs> this judge is a absolute prolific person for giving nonces and all those kind of people oh, no. like a real fucking easy time. And people like that, or maybe you've just been caught with a bit of weed or something like that that's completely just bleh. They'll He will literally go to town on you. His words were to me, I'm sending you to, basically, I'm sending you to jail for six months. Um, you, Mr. Hamilton Bing, are a, um, what did he fucking say? You should know better. You've been in the military. You're disciplined. And I'm sick to death, basically, of people like you coming through my court in the same thing. And he was like, take, like, take him down kind of thing. Holy shit, did I kick off. I mean, I'm only, what, 12 stone? I literally, you know, they, you get the two officers that are there. I lost my shit then. I, they were trying to, he was trying to. What was uh, the sentence? Six months. He, that's, he told you six, six months. Six months, so do three. But, um, I had my, I had my hands, so I, I stood there like at ease. And when, as, when he was sort of saying all that shit, one of the screws came behind me, the, the court people or whatever come behind me and tried to fucking basically put cuffs on my wrist. And I wouldn't give it to him. And I stood there like that and I wouldn't give it to him. And then as soon as he did, when, as soon as he finished fucking chatting his shit, I kicked right off. I threw one of them away. The alarm goes off in court. So sirens are going off in the courthouse. CID were on, in the lobby, um, on another case or whatever. They've come sprinting in. <laughs> I've had about six blokes, mate, just bundle me through the back door. Mate, I got filled in big time. <laughs> Carpet burn on the fucking face. Everything, mate. Brutal. Yeah. I, I, I think I did tell them to fuck. I think I said go fuck yourself or something like that. Yeah, I didn't go. I didn't go well. I can imagine the frustration. There is an argument though. There is an argument. He said that. Well, if you're going to put yourself in that position in the first place, no, you're no, you, you're absolutely <laughs> right, mate. But at that point, that's easier said than done. Sometimes. Mate, I, what was I? Twenty? Fucking what was I? Twenty four? Something like that. I was yeah. a young lad, mate. And I'm not fucking pulling like the military card or anything like that. But like. You're a young lad. You've done all this shit already. It's instilled in you. Like, I still pretty much haven't grown up, if you think about it. So what was the stuff that got dropped? What was the stuff she said he did that he didn't oh, get dropped? Apparent, right. There was a... Every month, right, I used to take her to um, Bristol because she had implants on her... Dent, like, what are they, um, braces on the inside of her teeth. And I don't know if in, in Cornwall they do it in Cornwall anymore. Whatever, but then the closest place was Bristol. Every fucking month, I had to take a drive all the way to fucking Bristol, right, and get these fucking things, like, tightened up in, in her mouth or whatever. So she had this, like, cast mould thing, right? Like an impression of a, a thing. So, you know when I said that she nicked my car? Yeah. yeah. Where was that mould? In the car? In right. the glove box? When they in- interviewed her, well, I was gone by then, um... But when they interviewed her, when I'm in the interview room, sorry, the um, photos, and there was an impression of this, of teeth marks there. So if you, if you bite down on someone. On her cheek. Yeah. Yeah. So if I, right, let's, let's test this. If I bite down on your cheek, show me where the teeth marks would be. So if I bite on your cheek, you grab the skin, you grab the skin. Let's, okay, let's use the leg. So if I bite down on your thing, you can have a top set like that, aren't you? And a bottom set like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No. What a shit. I had a top set there. Yeah. And a top set like that again. So it was like overlapping. So unless I'm like gnawing at her like a fucking idiot, there's no way. And basically, and that was another thing I said, well, if that's the case, then get a dental person to come in and fucking analyze that my teeth are like that. They're notoriously bad though. You know that. No, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, real terrible. Know. Well, I didn't know that. But anyway, it got dropped because funny that it was bullshit. Yeah. So that's the extent that it was like, It's bullshit, mate. How easy is it getting to dodge? I, I, there are people who end up in just terrible relationships. I, I, I went from completely terrible my fault. You know what, mate? Ter- when I, yeah, completely before I, my fault. Yeah, before before I, I'm divorced now. Before I got married, snap. Um, I went from terrible relationship. Terrible. It's like a lunatic. You go, what was I? You know, I think back and go, what was I? What was I thinking? And like the of all those, the, the ironically, the one I got divorced from, that that was like the sanest 
relationship I'd had of all of them mm. at that point. Everyone before was an absolute lunatic. Absolute lunatic. I was a lunatic for being, being yeah. I was with one girl, mate. Right. And uh, <laughs> honestly, you know, you think back and go, really? And yeah. she had, I, this is her words, she had shares in a brothel. Nice. Right? And girl. she worked there, but only on reception. Of course she did. <laughs> I'm telling you, mate. Fucking bullshit. I'm telling you. You're telling me. It was unbelievable. You're telling me she only worked on... Re- that's what she told unbelievable. you. Yeah, and I believed it. So I lacked Hey, it where out. did you get that new Louis Vuitton handbag? Yeah. Oh. But the po- I was totally fine with it. Yeah, I shared the book. <laughs> totally fine. Cracking. Honestly, crazy, mate. I almost crazy. spat over the fucking... But do you know I was what? okay but, with it. But during those years, though, it was like the Wild West for dating. Right? From about 05 onwards. Because that is when... Dating site started. Towie. T- yeah, Towie started, but dating site started. That yeah. is when uniform dating kicked off. Plenty of fish kicked off. I remember because they kicked off when I went on my second tour of Iraq, which is 05. Mm-hmm. And they had an internet cabin. <laughs> we came in off the ground, and as soon as that place up, all the boy, all the guys would be in there. Do you know, like Bieber. creatures, mate. Creatures. And, um, and, uh, it was, so it was like the Wild West because both men and women were kind of feeling this thing out. Mm. Hang on a minute, I got access. To, I don't have to go to a bar or no. social link to meet people and yep. whatever. And and back then, it wasn't a fuck fest like things are now. Mm. It was you would you go on a date, yep. you'd find someone with plenty of fish, and it wouldn't be like, yeah, straight in the, straight in the sack. <laughs> Not for most people. It'd be like date time, yeah. and then maybe in the sack after half an hour. <laughs> you know, it was it was a while. I had my first I had my first internet date in nineteen ninety eight. How do you remember? How do you yeah. even remember this? Because it, my first internet date, man. well, first off, it's my first date as a as a, I was weirdo ginger kid, like proper. We are all, all honestly, we. that was my first proper date. That was, and uh, it was my first proper date, second or third proper date. But that uh, my first ever internet date was nineteen ninety seven or ninety eight year, and it was on. Um, you're probably too young to remember this, but it was a uh, Yahoo was the search engine at the time. It was yeah. like there was only two or three search engines. You had America Online, you had Yahoo. And you add Alta Vista and maybe a couple of other bullshit ones. Okay. The Yahoo, literally searching, but also had chat rooms. Right. The cool room. The blue room. This is literally what they call it. You couldn't change your names. Yeah. And you just you just choose one to go into. Mm-hmm. And I ended up chatting to a girl on there, happened to be from Swansea. Didn't really, because you don't know this until you go that, you, you find out information. <laughs> right, and then, you go, and then, and then I went and met her, <laughs> went, met her for a, a cinema date in Swansea, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, mental. 1997. Anyway, there. I digress. Okay, so fast forward all through that. People should know better and you're in the nick because of a bad relationship. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, mate, look, pff, fucking blokes are blokes and we're not, you know, not trying to justify anything, but we're all programmed a fucking way, <laughs> blokes in general. And then you've added, well, you know, go and join in the military or whatever. And then there's fucking basically, imagine a little fire and you just pour paraffin on it to be this person and then coming out and you're like how the fuck can you tone that down at such Were a you young working? age um, I was a gamekeeper at the time well just training oh, to be yeah. a gamekeeper yeah yeah that went up the shitter then was that your first job then going to be your first job yeah yeah I think it was yeah I think it was so yeah jail was a bit of an eye opener go on what was that like so um, you went so you're in court you get bundled through, you get filled in. Yeah. Do you go straight from... Do you, where do you go? Yeah, do you go to the court jails then? First? Yeah, so it's down underneath, yeah. Talk through the process. I don't know the process of what it is. Um, do you go into jail? I mean, do you get into a court geezer, from getting into your cell? Funny, funny you should say this, and this is no bullshit. The geezer that was the fucking main jailer downstairs was the next para. Oh, really? Falkland's vet. And he turned around and he was like... He sat me down and he goes, you finished? And he had the whole fucking... John McAleese fucking hand up my <laughs> moustache. And he's like, you finished? I was like, yep. So, like, right, do you want a brew? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you're all right, mate, don't worry. And that was it. So you go in, in your fucking cell, wait for the van to this go. This is the courthouse cell, yeah. Yeah, go in the cell. And then um, off you go. Bundled in the van with whoever's going to, on the magic bus to the van, <laughs> to the fucking so jail. So which jail were you after? So you go, I went to Exeter, which is a holding jail. So that's a cat B. What? I don't so you got cat so like you got it it's three different no is it cat <coughs> cat C cat. well what's yeah. the cat B anyway right, so cat so you got A cat which is like Belmarsh fucking 
horrible terrorist jail or whatever. That's like a cat A. Cat B, then cat C, and then cat D. Cat B was where it's like a holding jail. So that's where everyone goes that's committed all kinds of different offences. It's basically a holding jail. Just wait for you. A dispersal jail, sorry. So yeah, that's why it's a sorting office. Yeah. Yeah. So went there. Um, Fuck me, mate. I don't care who the fuck you think you are. You get off that bus first time. Your bum hole goes. Why? What was that? Well, fuck me, mate. Like you see all the, you know, you see all the programs about jail and all that kind of stuff. You rock up, big fucking, you know. Imagine an old Victorian buildings, you know, and they're like all the way stacked up. You pull right outside, so you know what. The, and when you're in the cell, you've got nothing to do, mate. And you're looking out the window, and you can see the oh, look, there's the bus coming up with the new guys and shouting out the window at the new guys. <laughs> going to get raped. Oh, are you all shouting at you when you go out? Oh, yeah. mate, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What are you saying? Fuck, just... Like, How do they talk? Do you, you know what? To be, mate, it's your worst nightmare. It, <laughs> just, I'm, I'm not doing it. But like, imagine all that road man talk. Do you imagine all that shit? 24-7. It's well, what terrible. What do you mean road man talk? Give me some No, examples. I'm not giving you... <laughs> well, you, know, you know, like the fuck... Yeah, you do. I'm not fucking doing it. No, I don't. Well, go on, blow, what are you saying? Oh, yeah, yeah that. All that shit, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't believe I just did that. Fuck. <laughs> well, is that like? But that isn't how the all, are all people. No, not all talk. Though, but right, mate, right, come right. on. There's there's gobshites and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, mate, yeah. it's terrible. So threats are getting filled in. Threats are getting banged. Because yeah, and like at that time, you could smoke in jails, so it was like fresh meat straight away. Where's your burn? Which is code oh, for like back, like it's a slang right. for backy. Yeah, it is bad, mate. It is bad. So well. It's worse now. Why is that, mate? Fucking how? Look at look at the world now. Like you go on the street, how it's like. Imagine that you know all these like road men and all this kind of shit, and it's just cool to be like that. Imagine that times a thousand now in jail. It's like that. Back when I first went in, there was a bit of still <laughs> prisoner um, code, like no stealing from each other's cell, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> now. <laughs> Mate, the last time I went, I seen a bloke come in, and I was in the yard, and he came in with some night trainers on, <laughs> right? And he came out in the yard, and he was giving it... Jo- I've seen him before, in my last couple of sentences, I've seen him as well. And um, he was just a gobshite. And I watched him give it the big one for about an hour in the yard. And then the biggest... There's a geezer from Plymouth, right? And he's the biggest heroin addict I've ever seen. Huge. But he's got a brain like a child, right? Proper brain dead. Like them trainers, mate. Yeah? Yeah. You're gonna give me him. I was gonna fucking smash your head in. <laughs> trainers come off, goes back in the yard, back in the fucking block with no shoes on. Mate. Blokes get raided in their cells. What's, uh, here's a question for you. So you always get the, um, you always get the old stories of, uh, fucking rape. How legitimate is the threat of rape in a men's prison? In Britain? In Britain. Um, I've never seen it. And I've never heard of it. Huh. I said pretty low then, and a cat B anyway. I don't know about a cat A, mate. But um, obviously when you get to your, to the main jails, like your cat C's and stuff like that, you've got lifers that are, that, that are there. <laughs> oh, that's a different kettle of fish, isn't it? Yeah, but mate, to be fair, like these are guys that have been, like, like they've seriously fucked people up. Like, double murders and shit like that you know or whatever but they're chill they're so relaxed because it's that's their home mate they got it's just like they leave all their shit at the door and it's like this is my home here now there was a there was a geezer on my big stint i did there was a geezer and he was actually in with um he was really really old and he was actually in jail with one of the cray twins i've forgotten which one it was whichever the the whichever the one was the other for the other team yeah I don't know I don't know which one it was I Ronnie don't, I, I, don't, right. I don't know he um, he actually was yeah Ronnie Cray I'm sure he was actually in, in with him oh right yeah but this geezer this old guy was um, Mary his name was Mary he wasn't called Mary when he went in but he became Mary was it where's this in Belmarsh no that, that, no that was in Channingswood oh right right right, right. yeah I've digressed a little bit off the story there but yeah I took you down that track mate 
No, it's, so there's no, there's none of, there's none of that. You have to no. forgive me. I like my my knowledge of inside prison is a black hole. I, no pun intended. I've been <laughs> to um, <laughs> the only place I've been to prison wise. I went to uh, it was a prison and a and a young offender or youth youth place. What was it called? Up near Birmingham, north of uh, up yeah near Birmingham. A uh, uh, reg friend was in there. Mm. Uh, it was fucking second time. It was like the most relaxed prison I've ever seen. You know, it was because of the use in there, and he would be volunteering with them and oh, right, yeah. mentoring and stuff like this. And you can do in those places. I didn't know. Yeah, well, that's how I understood it anyway. Uh, this is my only experience of jails. It's yeah. nasty. It can be really nasty. Really, and like you know, fuck. Never want to go to that. Be in that situation ever again. Like the last time was the last time but um yeah it, it's fucking i've heard stories what it's like now and it's pff, last time i was there it was terrible terrible mm. can you imagine mate doing doing shit like coming out army or whatever you've done a couple of tours or whatever and then you're sat in a cesspit full of fucking idiots and you're one of those idiots because you're sat there as well mm. And then just surprisingly, though, there is a load of squaddies, ex military in jail. Loads. And it's all the same shit. Government doesn't know what to do with us. Just throw you in jail. It's just the easy option. No, but I wonder if the percentage, I wonder if the percentage of ex military in jail is the same as the percent, is the same as the percentage of ex military in civvy street anyway. Like, are there more civvies? Are there more ex military in jail? Proportionally than there are in the oh, no. street, or not? No, I don't, no, no. I don't know. I think so. Like think not. When I was in Challenge Woods, which was a Cat C, you had what? I think you had like three wings, and then you had like the nonce wing as well. And um, apparently, there was loads of ex-military on the nonce wing. <coughs> loads. I think even an RAF. Really? Yeah, mate. When you say nonce, are you talking specifically about paedophilia or sexual crimes? Both. Both. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, there was, I know there was an RAF, high ranking RAF officer from Channingswood at the time when I was there, and he was on the nonce wing. For Pete, but being a pedo. Mental, innit? It is mental. And he was, and, and he was high ranking, it apparently. Is, uh, the, the pedo thing really fucking worries me. And, um, I was, I have been, a, so, you know, when people say, oh, the world's a more dangerous place and Peter Pills everywhere, you gotta be careful and all that. And I, I've got, Two kids. Same. I got two so kids. So yeah, you know, yeah. So it's always been top of mind. You know, their safety's always you know top of mind. Paramount. Right? Yeah. And I thought over the years, huh, nah, I don't think it's any worse than it was, for example, forty years ago. I think we're just more aware of it, so it makes it seem like there's more. <clears throat> and then over the last couple of years, I've realised that's not the case. It is actually worse now. And and one of the one of the main reasons. Is that it used to be harder for a paedophile to survive in the world than it is now, and to it used to be harder for them to move from place to place, get away from somewhere they committed crimes mm-hmm. where they were known, and move elsewhere to uh, to carry on what they were doing then. And now mm. you would think it would be harder still now because. You know, communication of information and databases and all that. But it actually, it's easier now because travel is easier. Moving to a different country is easier. Um, you, you know, uh, being able to use different identif- identities is easier. Protection of people's DLs is done. Like, not wanting to out people mm-hmm. as these yeah. things. Yeah, okay, registered in the sex offenders list. Mm-hmm. But you can still move villages or towns. You can move from a town down here. You move to a town in Scotland. That town doesn't know you're a fucking paedophile. To move from a village down here to a village in Scotland, that village doesn't know you're a paedophile. Do you know what the, pro- you know what the main problem is? Oh. You're doing that. So say, like for the example you're doing, you're saying there, mm-hmm. some one pedo moves from, say, Scotland, comes down to Cornwall, and he's been rehoused or whatever. Shit you not. These people are getting housed by play parks, mm. by mm. fucking schools. Being and it's happening. Handled, yeah. It's fucking happening. So you've got the ability to move about. Travel's easier, basically. They can cut about. They can, they can basically find different target areas and get away with it. The system's And then fucked. you've got, we've got improved communication, obviously, age of the internet. They can, they can communicate more. So it basically means that, I mean, back in the day, say, let's, you know, of a hundred paedophiles, let's say, the majority of those would not survive long enough to fucking breed mm. or long enough to, um, 
we've not we're not survived long enough to um, be able to make connections or provide information to other people to other pedophiles to be able to do what they want to do. It's different now. Yeah, there's literally more of that type of person in the world because their genetics are surviving longer. They yep. they're longer. It's one of those things. Yep. I over the last three years, three people I've known personally through working in different places. It turned out to be pedophiles. And it's one of the things that shocked. And I've only found out about those three people over the last 12, 18 months. And it shocked me. And they go, Jesus Christ. That means I've known personally, worked with personally, yeah. three people who have turned out to be pedophiles. Now, in my mind, that is a massive percentage. That let is a huge percentage. Let me ask you a question then I'd on your own podcast. Go on. How do you personally feel then when you've <laughs> fucking sat down, worked with this guy, probably had a pint with him? And you find out, bang, pedo. What goes through your head? Oh, well, hopefully I found out because I've been sent down. No, okay, right. So is there like, fuck, you know, that guy was a fucking do you, guilt or like, because I've not seen that? Why didn't I not see that? Uh, no, in these three I'm talking about, not guilt. Oh, they weren't close friends. I worked with them. Ah, this right, is in okay. the pit, you know, in Iraq. So we'd worked together. In, in the vicinity of each other. Either they were on my team or they were on other teams. We were yeah. literally on the same contract. Yeah, all out right. there. We know them like that. You know, have a brew with right. all the guys in the community room, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You, that you know them to that limit. These aren't people who I would go and out in the piss with right, on a regular basis. I, they weren't like friend friends. Roger. They were yeah. friends that I made out there along with the 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 other people on the contract at the time. Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and they were different. But of those three, I would never have clocked it. I would never have clocked. I was shocked when I found out about them. Shocked. Because you go, Jesus. You think, he was a decent guy. <laughs> he was a decent guy. I showed he him a seemed, photo of my kids. He Shit. seemed decent. Yeah. You go, you know, but that is, that is part of the thing with these people. They are, they are, they excel at hiding the heinous crimes that they commit. They excel at it. They excel at masking it all, pretending to be one thing while in the background doing other things. Because otherwise they wouldn't be able to survive. They're ninjas at it. Ninjas. I think I'll probably, yeah. Horrendous. I, yeah, if I know three people, yeah. well, if I know all three people, yeah. how many are paedophiles that I fucking don't know and will never know? Because there's more. There's more in my network. There has to be. 100%. There has to be. 100%. And it's frightening. Yeah. Because... I, it's, yeah, it is frightening. It's frightening in a way that that means that it, that means that it, the problem is more um, more uh, substantial than what I thought, mm. and it means that there are people that are going to go on doing whatever they do. I'm never going to know about. It, I'm never going to be able to stop it. But that makes you. It's sad though, isn't it? Because then it puts like like you're a father. I'm a father. It's going to get to a point where it's so bad, and you'll be like, you can't. Like for me, I'd probably go right, kids. Uh, you're not associating with anyone and so and so's father uh, right who's he what's he all about and do, do you know what I mean you'll be like safeguarding to fuck out of your kids over the top do you get what I mean I do but you've got to balance it you've got to balance it you safeguard them too much when they go into the real world when they grow up and they're flying on their own mm. they've got no they're not streetwise if you know what I mean they haven't got that intuition you get- need, it's, it's a balance isn't it you need to let them learn their own mistakes and learn from their own mistakes but also you don't want the mistakes to be fucking catastrophic you know mm. like taking with his original from dude some dude to get a car for example you know <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean i joke in the words it but you know it's, it's a it's, really it's hard balance gen. to strike it's, yeah really hard balance to strike you, you, you it's almost like one of the one of the main things you need to do is is you need to try and educate people people and kids to be decent at judge of character mm-hmm. and decent at personal sp- safety and personal awareness yeah. and know that there are some people out there who can manipulate the fuck out of you. So they go back to jail, they live like fucking royalty. Why is that? Oh, mate, no word of a lie. Why? They do, they do, because there's no drama, mate. They don't want to fight. Nonces don't fight with, between themselves, really, do they? Like they're all over like old people, or they're like they're not right. They're not. If me and you went to jail, we'd be on the main wing, and we'd like we could have a tear up if we wanted to, or you know we'd be we'd be squared away. You go like you go to the nonce wing. So I've been through like so when I was on uh, uh, in Channing's Wood, I was like um, the Dobie guy. 
so I'd look after the our wings laundry every week. So there's me and a couple of other blokes, whatever, get the get the trolleys with all the Adobe bag and you cut on down to the fucking to the main bit. Who runs all the washing? All the nonces. They're all in there. So before you go, before you get that job, you have to sign a disclaimer to say I'll be in and around people that have committed X, Y, and Z or whatever, and I know this, and I'm not going to smash anyone's head in, basically. It's basically covering the jail's ass. So you'd have to cut through the jail, and you've got, imagine, like, Basra is the main fucking, like, holding bit for the main fucking blokes, right? I'm just laughing at the, sorry, I'm just laughing at the risk mitigation that the prison has. Right. Risk assessment. Send in the main wing, people on into the nonce wing. Right, there's a risk they'll fill people in. How can you mitigate a risk? Well, get the ticker form. To get the ticker box on there. I will not mate, fill anyone in. <laughs> it, mate, honestly, it is like that. And oh and you're left alone with them. You're left alone with that. But that, that it's, I'll get onto this. It's so fucked up, Joe. It's so fucked up, right? So, do, 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 go through. And you're in Basra. And I'm, shit you not, it is fucking, like, you know the streets in Basra. Mm-hmm. You, you fucking pretty much mirror that. It's a shithole. Filthy. Oh mate, stinking! Like how fucking. Oh, the prison, people, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah how general. people live, like, and shit really? outside. Oh mate, that's got to be different from prison to prison, though, right? The standards. Sure. It, d- it depends where you are because okay. Cat C at Channingswood is you're a bit more open. You've got a bit more freedom. Cat B, you literally block and fucking like you got buildings, and then you've okay. got maybe a little square, like a parade square. That's your parade. That's your little walkie round ground. Anyway. So, like, imagine leaving Basra, the fucking gate's open, big gate, and you go through the nonce bit to get to the laundry. Imagine going from Basra to Dubai. Mm. It's like that, mate. And I'm, I'm shit you not, grass, like a, like fucking a billiard table. So who's maintaining that? They are. They do, yeah. Yeah. They just have higher standards and they don't want the violence and there's less carnage. Yeah. So they yeah. can. Mate, there's fucking gleaming. Like... Honestly, mate, not a grass out of place. No weird, rubbish. Mate. It's weird, mate. So you go in and then like it's it's so weird because you literally go in, you chuck them the wash in, and then you go oh, I used to go like straight back and sit by the front door where the screws office was and sit just sit there and it was me and another geezer and we used to just chat to ourselves for like an hour or something like that. But you see them all cutting around, mate, and they try and talk to you. And you'd be like, fuck off. Get away from me. Literally get the fuck away from me. And you, you can see it in them. Do you know what I mean? It's weird. Anyway. I wonder if that cleanliness and tidiness is due like due to also personality types and disorders and things like that. Because you've got to be Probably. tapped in the head to well, yeah, be someone yeah, like that. Yeah. So Commonly that was, tapped in the head. So that was that, bro. And then... Let's get off jail. It's a bit fucking depressing. Um... <laughs> So that was my first stint anyway. Um, what did I do when I came out? So I got out and then... Three months. Yeah. And then got out. I thought, what the fuck am I going to do? So I didn't know what I was going to do. And um, I... Um, what did I fucking do? Oh, yeah. So I remember I went on a date uh, in Plymouth. Right, this bird. Blonde bird. And I thought, yeah, she's tasty. Sweet. So I went on this date and I um, I sat there waiting for her at this restaurant and then I heard a I heard a nice motor pull up. Looked outside, it was her. This brand spanker Porsche Carrera, is it? S? I don't know. Whatever it was, nice Porsche. She comes out, clipping over. Straight away, red flags. Like, looking at it now, 100% red flags. Um, <laughs> Why? Hang like on a minute. A typical red flag. Hang on a minute. Why are you red flag? Because well, you know, I is said she to not you, just a successful woman. No, 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 no. Just me in person. You know, like she, yeah, she she is. A red flag because of the, the the short skirt, the Le Bouton fucking heels, all this kind of shit. Like, yeah, historically, it's been bad for you. Thank is that you. what it is? That's what I'm trying to say. Right, okay, yeah. so right. a red flag for you. Yeah, right. like right. oh shit, here we go. Not again. <laughs> hey, it's not good if good looking. Visibly potentially successful women are a flag for you. Let me let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. So I was like chatting to her. I said, well, you know, what do you do? She's like, I'm a model. All right, okay. What kind of modelling do you? Must obviously do quite well because you got that fucking brand new Porsche outside. Yeah, um, 
Og det er porn. God, det er kan man sige. Ja, yeah, yeah, there's a red flag. <laughs> so I was like, mm. okay, cool. Got chat in. So, you know, how, I'm intrigued. Like, how's it go? She's like, you can do a shoot for me if you want. Jen. Yeah. So that was me. <laughs> no. Did you? Then I got in the industry, yeah. <laughs> no, no, really? Jen. I didn't think that was coming. Oh yeah, my I god! Left, I left that one for you. Yeah. Ah, oh, see, that's uh, all right compared to my brothel girl. No, mate. Jesus Christ! So I did my first shoot was a um a foot fetish shoot. I was like, what the fuck? So this is was it? Not even this is in that. the UK and it's legal in the UK to do that. Porn, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know, ex-para, I would have thought you'd know that. Yeah, but I wasn't in the porn business. <laughs> you fucking all okay. wrong. Yeah, so my first, my first, um, my first shoot was basically getting. That's a hell of a chat up line on a date, isn't it? What? Was that on the date she said that? She's just completely open about it. She's like, you should do a shoot with me. You're different. Okay. Cool. Yeah. What's your, what's your chopper like? I don't know. <laughs> it's really small right now because I feel really intimidated. <laughs> My God! So yeah, no, I did it. And um, what was the decision? What was the thought process when you decided to do there that? There was none. Apart That's from the she's only, a goddess. No, the fact of like, fuck, I'm going to be a porn star. Right. This is sick. Okay. And I get to shag really tasty women. Yeah. Loads of red flags. So at that point, I had nothing going on, mate. <laughs> so <laughs> my my, uh, my schedule was pretty empty. So did that, and then <laughs> and then my schedule I'll, was pretty empty. Oh. <laughs> And then I got into, um, so looking at me now, nothing, right? But back along, I used to train quite a bit on the juice. I had quite a good, I was in quite a good shape. And um, started a stripping agency, male stripping agency in Cornwall. Is this why you're still doing the porn? Yeah. How long were you doing the porn for? About four years. But it was like, I started. Four start- years? Yeah, yeah. In, in, ah, let me move on to it. So instead of doing like porn, and you're thinking porn, like bang, shoot, 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 shoot every month. No, no, no. So what you do is, well, what I was doing, shoot, and then you have like your Twitter and all that kind of stuff, right? And then basically promote yourself on that more, sh- like so. Be- right, every porn star will do escorting. Yeah. Right. So me and you escort, even though you're better looking than I am. Debatable. It's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> What we'll do, like, so let's just say we're in London. So, like, I don't know, for an overnight stay for an escort for me and you, it would be like eight hundred. Let's just say eight hundred quid a night. I don't know what the rates are now because you do porn and you've got that little bit of a um, platform, a profile. Sorry, charge a bit more. So, like, twelve hundred quid for the night. Do you get what I mean? So you, okay, you didn't notice when you started the porn, though, right? No. So I did a, I did a, did a couple of shoots, dated a couple of girls within the industry. And um, obviously the escort comes part and parcel of that, so I learned very quickly. And then like the cam stuff. What do you mean the cam stuff? Like webcam. Yeah. Mm. So what was that first? What was that first shoot like? You must be shitting bricks. Yeah, no, I didn't fuck her. It was basically um, (laughs) I thought I was. (laughs) New. So it's a foot fetish shoot, James. All right. Okay. Cool. What do I do for that? So basically, I've got to sit on the couch with my dong out, and she's got up uh. with her foot. Didn't really do anything for me. What was it? What was it like in terms of setup? What you know? Because really, there's it, different. Yeah, I suppose there's a CD side to it, and there's a professional side to it. No, it's all it's all professional. Explain to me how professional we're talking. So, you know, like how the um, you'd think it would be like full of coke and fucking people around and fluffers and all this kind of stuff, right? It's none of that. You're literally, it's so professional. It's, you've got to have certs done regularly. I think it's like every month. Mm-hmm. Back back when I did, I can't remember like the specifics, but I used to get have to get certs done quite regularly, especially if you're escorting as well. So before you go to any shoot, well, when you go to the shoot, you'd have like a, a little book and it'd have your, it's like an MOT certificate of the car. Exactly, but you're the car. Right, there's my last cert. It was done there. There's the last one. That's just so they they know, because obviously you don't bag up them. Um, and it's really there's no drugs, no drinking. It's literally like on set. You're working, bish bash bosh, done, gone. How was the how was the potential exploitation of the the women 
managed there and the risk of it reduced because one of the big things about um the porn industry is that right there's, there's a huge percentage of it is you know men and women just want to this is their vocation and what they want to do to earn money and they mm-hmm. enjoy it and it's a career for them and there's the other side where you get people mainly women who are probably most vulnerable to doing it are doing it because they can't do anything else yeah and they're doing it because they need money Class and, money or maybe yeah. they've been blackmailed into it or these other horrendous yeah. things yeah. and it's probably the only it's probably the only um like job type where that can really ha- apart from modeling uh, when that can really happen to women so when i was doing it it was I know there's new rules there now that they can't do certain things. Like before, you could film certain scenarios. Okay. Like the R word. Yeah. You can't do any of that sort of stuff now because mm-hmm. um, it incites people watching it and they yeah. get off on it and they're going to do it for real, all yeah. that kind of stuff. So that was just coming in. Um, but as from what you said, I've, I've never, I don't know. The answer is why was so? Why was she doing it? That that woman you first met who got you into it. So I don't know, why, why, how did she get into the industry? Well, I, I don't know. Like I don't know. I never asked her. But like, um, then I see why it's got appeal. I mean, <laughs> I totally get it. And do you know what? The, the women get paid more. Well, I don't know if they do now. Back then, the women got paid more than the blokes always, and it's fucking harder for the blokes, massively. <laughs> Can you imagine sat there trying to do the job and then try and keep that going, and you've got like three people behind you watching you. It's quite hard. No pun intended. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got... Um, so yeah, that. And then Cornwall, the stripping company, um, did that for a bit. So was it, was it, that was at a venue, or was it stripping no, no, no. supply? No, that's that's what I was doing, yeah. So like butlers and the buff, and then none of the lads would strip, and, then, and I was the only stripper even though I wanted some strip as well. But we did like three or four different th- venues, big ones. Good-ish size, sorry. Um, then that's when I started getting mixed up in the wrong crowd. And Why is that? What, why was? It, why at that time? Around drugs. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I met my ex-wife, who is an absolute fucking champion. Like we've had our differences massively. Uh, and it's been really hard, but we're at a really, really good place right now. No, that's good. And we shout to the ex-wife. Hey, I said shout to the ex-wife. That's yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. Sky, She's gleaming, gleaming bird. Uh, really supportive mother, and she supports me. She you know texts me, so congr- um, best of luck for today. All that. Oh, really? And her bloke is um, ex Reg. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Do you want to, don't say his name. Don't say his name on air. You what's may the, not what's the blue? What's the blue tab? Two para. I, th- I think that's what he was, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Is he yeah. our age? Uh, he's 38. Tell me his name after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sh- shout out DB. <laughs> DB? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's, on the, he's been on the circuit. But um, top lad. Um, and he's a really good sort of, we all co-parent together and he's really good with my kids. So oh, big, big respect to him for that. Yeah. Good guy. Um, yeah. So me and the... Uh, me and the ex-wife, um, then we kind of did like a duo sort of thing in the industry. Um, and then we kind of, that's, and then it kind of dwindled out then. Um, and then the relationship, because then I was getting involved with these other people doing other things. Um, and I was out silly o'clock in the morning. I was being a twat, cheating, all that kind of stuff. And, um, that's when the relationship kind of was starting to break and it, what do we do when we get it gets a bit too much we we pop smoke and flank left so i literally ran away to the legion jesus christ yeah really yeah. how long were we there for uh three days <laughs> <laughs> so i was like fuck this I'm what out was that it. like? Hang on a minute. Tell me about this. What do you mean you pot smoke to the Legion? I need you to talk I had a wobble. Th- I had a wobble. I need you to talk through this because huh. you, know, pro- you probably know blokes and I definitely know blokes who mm. have definitely thought of bugging out and going to the Legion. I know of one who went and did it in my time and I know I know he literally bugged out and went there. He left and then bugged out and went there. 
I think he did that because he left before Afghan kicked off, missed Afghan, didn't do any decent, and went. Did he do Iraq? Iraq? Hmm? Did he do Iraq? Did he do Iraq? Yeah. Yeah. First name A? No. Okay, right. Because there was a guy I was inside with, began with A, who was a legionnaire, who was ex reg. And that's Jen, because I've seen it. Aid? No. Okay. Leave it there. Mm. And there was another guy who came to three para who had previously been had been Legion before that. So mm. okay, so what, you just flew to France? Yes, I literally packed fucking a day sack. And Did then, you do any research beforehand? No. What but I knew I basically just what kit I need. Boom. Gone. What year was this? Two thousand and Fifteen, maybe. Because when you go there, I think I don't know if it, it was that then, but it used to be, didn't it? That like you go, you sign up, and that's five years you've done. Five years you're yeah, religion, you're not. You live on camp, you stay on camp. Yeah, that's, that's it. true. And only after five years you can can you be released? Yeah, right? that's true. So what happened with you? Um, jumped on the plane, Exeter to Paris. Jumped off. Said to the cabbie, "Take me to the fucking Legion, big man." And it was it was dark and. I was like, "Fuck, we've been we've been driving for a real long time now. <laughs> this doesn't look any like where the fuck are we going in the city." And like he pulls up this road, and it was um, there's like big, like a state building, like flats. So, fuck, I am so getting bummed here now. Like this, this, I'm getting fucked. And uh, went around the corner, and there's big fucking gate with big wall around it. It's impressive. It's really. It was a legion. Yeah, it's impressive to see. Uh, Fort de Nujon and uh, floodlit against the gate and uh, dropped me off. I'm have a look at that. I keep talking. I'm and I was like, cheers, big lad. Yeah. There's actually, if you go on. Actually, I don't know where it is. I did see a video the other day of it, to be fair. So I rocked, I rocked up. There's a big gate and then there's a big wooden gate behind that, big wooden door behind it. Banged on the door. And this geezer comes out and I think he was Brazilian. Or somewhere like that, and he yeah. and he spoke to me in French, and I was like, "I'm, I'm English. Um, I want to join the Legion." And he's like, "Passport." So I came, jumped out, gave it's him a passport. Paris, right? yeah. yeah, and um, gave him a passport, and then he fucked off. That's the one. Oh yeah, check that out. And um, it was late. It must have been like nine o'clock or something like eight, nine o'clock. Yeah, it's the one, and um, it looks better. At night, because it's all flood lit up. Yeah. And you're like, oh, fuck, yeah. And um, they're like, basically, mate, you've missed the the intake, intake for today. I was like, fucking hell, for today? All right. He goes, you have to sleep in the here. So you go in, and on the left, there's like a room, and it had like a little... You know, like when you do the barb test? Yeah. That similar thing, but they've got it for all different nationalities, and there's no computers. It's handwritten on a bit of paper. And the big cobble... F- floor and he literally went there's a blanket there's a blanket <laughs> there's a pillow fucking on you go big lad so I slept on the floor uh, in the morning I had to wait for everyone to come in it must have I don't know what the timings were but people started coming in then after like a bit bloke comes in do the barb test or what our equivalent to the barb test and then if you pass that then barb test is an aptitude test for civilians listening it's an aptitude test to join yeah. the military and then Went across the main main fucking block. Um, went up. And then you got all all the people that are waiting to go. So they've already been accepted. They're waiting to go to the farm. So they're all in the tracksuit, you know, like the you know, like the old Ron Hills. All in the old Ron Hill. Mm-hmm. And then like a red I think we had red t shirts. So you got like all different nationalities there, main, main, mainly Eastern European. And they're all looking at you, and then they've got a big pull up bar in the middle of the middle of the corridor. And they're like, on you go. And it, it'll demonstrate one, but it's like, not strict. It, fucking strict. Like, and you Full extension. And you're holding there for a while. Mm. I think it's minimum eight. So, <laughs> there's one fat kid that didn't pass. I'm lucky. But, um, so bang, 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 did it. There's two people that, that didn't get, didn't get to it. They got ejected pretty quick. Then you go and put your gear down. In uh, in the bed space and the beds, mate. It's nothing like our military, like. And I only I didn't even get out of Fort de Nujon. Like I didn't even go to the farm. Like and I can't. 
I couldn't imagine what the farm's like. But my goodness, this was shit. The beds, mate, you're like, I'm not even joking, mate. They're like that together. So two, imagine the imagine the bunk beds that we get. Yeah, but really Sp- close. Yeah. Space like that between them, like fucked. And um, do that. Chucks you in a uh, put your kit down. Go into like a you get sort of like your interview. And there was four of them in each corner of the room, and you sit there. Why do you want to join the Legion? Blah, blah, blah. Have you been in trouble with the police? All this kind of stuff. Are you on the run from the police? All this kind of stuff. What did you do in the uh, What did you do in Civvy Street in the military? Blah 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 blah. Um, fire loads of questions at you, and then they obviously, and I was completely honest. Yeah, I've been in trouble with the old bill. Blah blah blah. And they're like, right, okay, cool. They've got like a a room down the end of the corridor, and like no one can go in there, and he basically came back from that room and it was like a folder mate like that right everything about me oh really everything like you know when you go to um, secondary school and you had um, so like when I went to secondary school when I was like in year 7 HSBC came in and opened up a kiddies account and stuff like that mate had shit like that in there so where did they get that from Interpol or something yeah like so that. it's it's they are linked to Interpol at the back end of the corridor like or whatever don't know Never, you know, you, you don't see it. It's like a big door. Mm. And then it's like, um, and he said, right, you're going to need a new name. Um, why? Because I was on the run at the, well, not on the run, criminal record, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Mm. They, they, they ask, they ask, do you want a new name? Oh, you get offered it. You get offered it, but they were like, you, you've been to jail, mate. Probably best. So it's like a pseudonym you'd use. Uh, How'd yes you get and no. A new name? So, right, what you they can't do? Deed poll in France, can you? No, but right, I don't know the proper way of doing it, but this is what happened to me. <laughs> okay, um, what did he call me? Did you say Dirk Diggler? I'm gonna. Okay. No, it was David Hunter. Okay, right, which is quite weird because that name that I said about the two paralad. Oh yeah, very very close to that. <laughs> yeah. Um, he goes. Right, okay, so your name's David Hunter, you were born, and it was like a day over my birthday, a month over my, the month, and a year over the year I was born. You were born on this day, that blah, 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 blah. Um, you were born in Birmingham, United Kingdom, um, and that's you. Literally wrote it down, gave it to me, and he goes, James Hamilton Bing? He opened his drawing and went, Psh, he's now dead. Where were you actually born? True, right. So he changed everything. For the minute, so initially it's like you go under a pseudonym, right? Yeah. So, and he's literally like, in the drawer, my passport, everything. And he looked at me, he's like, he's now dead. Like, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, right, cool. And um, <laughs> then uh, have a medical, all that kind of shit. And then they start calling your name, Hunter. And I was like, we got Bull Chef. You know, all that shit. Uh uh, completely different sort of to our and this is one thing I really did like it there they when you go to the scoff house it's first man in if you're the first man in you shit out of luck because you get your scran and you've got to stand behind the table behind your chair with your food there until the last man's got his food You and then once, you've, once you're all there you all sit down together you all eat so your food's getting cold so it's best to be last <laughs> and um, they if they were going to beast you which they did They'll, they'll join in straight away. There's none, none of this fucking shouting down from you. When you're uh, the press up, they'll get right. down and they'll do it all with you. Just, in your, him. just in your face. Mm. But um, yes, yeah, so I had my medical, um, and then I wanted to go to two rep, and then basically they said it was a ex army British officer that was the was the uh, medic guy there, and he was like, "You got a heart condition, big man. You can't come in." From the ECG. Like, oh what? my god! So yeah, my atrix valve apparently is a bit dicky. Okay. So it's like, nah. See you later, bud. Fly on, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Can you pick me up from exit? Were oh, you half relieved not having to spend five years? Mate, ago? honestly, it, looking back on it now, I would love to do it. I'd still make. Oh, come on, we'd all love to go and do something. Yeah, that, I know like, what you mean. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking right, we would. But mate, it was top shit. 
block jobs. Like, you can polish a turd only so much, it's still going to be shit, mate. Mm. Mm. So, that was that. Came home and then got into this whole... Because obviously I was, seek, I was seek, trying to seek a brotherhood. Like, trying to get back into finding something. Be part of a tribe. Mm-hmm. So, did all that. And then I just basically got mixed up with the wrong crowd. And that just went fucking down. And that's obviously when I was up to some really naughty business. And um, then that's when I got stabbed as well. Um, which oh, was- yeah. He's told that on the Icebreaker story. Yeah, so that was uh, to do with the drug deal. Like, mm-hmm. And he got stabbed through, yeah. the, uh, through chest. the chest, out yeah. through your armpit. So I did. Yeah. Luckily, Mr. missed your lung. Just, I think it was like two mil off mm. off my lung or something stupid like that. She said, mm. "We well, only got that story again." I know it's, it's no, an no. icebreaker. So if you want that story, folks, you got the icebreaker. Um, yeah. And then that's when, like I said, it was it was getting well over my head, and uh, the lads that I was associating with. This is back then in Cornwall. Cornwall, yeah. Like, they... Bad lads gang. Kind yeah. Of, kind of... Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Involved yeah. in all sorts. Yeah, mate. And... Hierarchy, status. Yeah. Look at me, I'm initiation, the big man. Initiation. Big man kind of stuff. Respect in the underworld. So, there was that, and then... Violence. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it, mate, looking back on it, mate, it was fucking stupid. It's absolutely stupid. Like, yeah, but you can see how they draw people in. And they keep people in. Mate, like, and you can see the appeal of it too. What I wanted was I was seeking that adrenaline. I was seeking that buzz. I was getting it, mate. I was taxing drug mm. dealers at one point. And you know, I can remember oh fuck am I say this? No, I'm not gonna say that. But like, yeah, I was I was actively doing surveillance on dealers and then taking their stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks British Army for treats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, did all that and then... Easy to fall into because it, it offers mo- mo- a lot of the things that is really hard to come by in Civic Street. Structure, routine, you, you know exactly where your place in the hierarchy sits, you're, you know exactly what's required of mm-hmm. you and there is also that um, ex- expectation to unquestionably follow orders. Yeah, 100%. So... Lost, I probably would say. Mm -hmm. Um, Then I decided, okay, maybe I need to sort of clean up my act a little bit. What do I know? Okay, well, I know know the industry, the the sex industry. Okay, cool. So I found a, which was very local, a guy that does um, bespoke fetish furniture. Mm -hmm. He had this uh, lockup, big lockup. Half of it was a his, his workshop. The other half was a showroom. Well, I turned... Well, he was doing... It was like a showroom slash had a mistress that worked in there. Little bits and bobs went on in there. And I, th- I came in. I was like, fuck, I'm going to turn this into something. There's nothing like this in Cornwall. Like, this is going to be mine. So I rented it off him. And what I was planning on doing was doing like live streaming of bondage and all that kind of stuff. But that's... You know, it's not my bag at all. This this place was kitted up to the, to the fucking nines. Mate. Like a red room. Mate, it was gl- it even had a safe room. It had a safe room. Um, what do you mean it had a safe room? As in, like, a room where you could go and lock yourself in and there's, like, a two-way mirror and all that kind of shit. Oh. Yeah, it, it, okay. it, it was pretty gnarly. Google it. Wait, after. I'll show you it okay. after. Um, and... So these guys, this, this crowd that I was part of, there was a guy that they were after for ages and it was pent, mate. The, the amount of money that was going through at the time was ridiculous. Through what? Hands. Like, so. For, for, for where? Okay, let me, okay, so easily, easily 60, 70, 80 grand every three weeks. But this is the drug dealing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was, that's what was going through hands at the time. And I remember being, uh, at a kitchen table where I had this all laid out, mate, and it was like... So that organisation you're part of, basically an organised crime syndicate, right? Yeah. And they were involved in 
drugs and sex industry? No, just drugs. Just drugs. Yeah. Okay. And um, then, what do I get to? Yeah, it's like there was just there was just money, and basically this this lad that they were after was an absolute raving scumbag. Like you get a criminal, and then you get lower than the low. This guy had a rap sheet a mile long, mate, and he was like <clears throat> waiting for old age pensioners to just cash in their gyro and then follow them home and then mugging them. Oh my god! Like he was a proper waster, like proper waster. He. Which, funny that, it turned out to be a bit of a bacon, a bit of a nonce. I, I did hear. Don't quote me on that, but I did, I've heard that. Um, he, they, they, he, they owed this guy, they owed, sorry, he owed the guy's money, pennies compared to what was, was pulling in, but out of principle, they went and got him. They got him. Um, I get a call. Um, we're going to bring him to you. Can we use the dungeon? It's like, pfft. And I don't know why the fuck I, f- I was like, yeah. What are they? What were they after him for? Uh, just a debt. When you say after him, to get the debt back and give yeah. him a good shoe in. Yeah. 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 And then um, they just brought him to me and like a fucking idiot. I just agreed to it. So the CCTV's got them pulling up and me dragging him out of the car into the dungeon. And uh, yeah. Go on. Well, he was only there for 12 minutes, but I did scare him quite, quite bad, quite bad. And then one of the, um, one of the guys that were there that bear in mind, they all rocked up and they're all off and nut, all been drinking, all been fucking on the gear. What time was it? <clears throat> it was, it was dusk because I remember it being a bit dark. It was getting dark and I was, mate, I was in, I was in flip flops and baldies again, just chilling out like at home. I and mean, it was like five minutes away from the house. I was like, sweet, I'm on the way. So I bent him up. and Did I, they pay you for that? Or was it just a thing? No, it's just a thing. Because you're in with... In with <sighs> yeah. Stupid, man. And I knew you had a spot. I knew you had a spot. Yeah. Um, the... And basically, he was in there for twelve only 12 minutes, and it got... Someone said something which they shouldn't have said. Right. That, that was part of it, and I didn't agree with it. And I was like, that's it. That's enough now. He's done. I let him down, um, patched him up, I even gave him a fucking beer and a cigarette. Bear in mind, he's blindfolded the whole way through this. And uh, let him go, and then they fucked him up a bit more, apparently. Next thing I know, um, I'm in a car and uh, got chased by arm response. And basically, they all, they all hit us at the same time. I got a Glock pointing in my face. So we, I would crash the car. And then I was trying to get out of the fucking seat, uh, out of the door but the child lock was on so I was trying to climb over and I just got a glock point in my face I was like yeah okay no drama's big man that was it okay so so not that was and then obviously pleaded guilty for that there was five of us all together that got sent down for that but the kicker is the guy that we did that to his charge seat was on like five different the amount of crimes this guy's committed prolific criminal like scumbag criminal five sheets of paper a four sheets of paper easy and there was five of us all together and we're on like two Mm. (coughs) like all together so did 19 months behind the door on that (coughs) no sorry four years 11 months got sentenced to and then um my (coughs) sorry my um put in a right for appeal we all put a right in for appeal and the only people that got the right to appeal was myself and the not the main man but the guy that had been caught who was a relative um, for other crimes and they just basically tallied him up I think he got like eight years yeah but then he had like a load of other charges on top of that <clears throat> so appeal went through um, and this is after going, this is a long time. And um, me and him were on video link. They basically told him to fucking screw the nut, fuck off, do your eight years. I was like, oh, shit. And then they came across to me. My brief um, threw in um, like a GOC's commendation from Iraq. 
And they were like, yeah, okay, look, you're a dickhead. Um, you got mixed up in the wrong crowd. And <clears throat> I'm going to restart your sentence at three years. So by that time, and that was, and there was, the grounds of appeal was ex- over the, ex- no, grounds of appeal, excessive sentencing. Yeah. So they just basically restarted my sentence at three years. And then I was like, fucking hell, I calculated it there and then. And I was like, I'm gone. So I did a week. And then that was it. I was out. Only a week? No, did 19 months behind oh, the door. Oh, sorry. Did right, a right, night, sorry, I did, sorry. I did right, 19 yeah, months yeah. behind the door. And then, and then at that point, they're like, huh. yeah, so I had a touch. So I was really happy about that. And um, lucky. Lucky. And then... Um, when did you start realising you need to change, to push things up? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I got out. Um, did a I started a groundworks company like the day I got out I put myself phoned up the geezer I was like I want to do a digger ticket I funded it myself like yep okay good guy put me through my ticket and worked some quarries and then within a year and a half I had a groundworks company Re- did really well mate out of that and I had 20 employees and it was like I'd kind of done it like an agency mm-hmm now, I just started off with me, a transit van with a tipper on it, and a trailer, and a little digger. And I was just going around and working on these boom sites and that with me and the ex work because she stayed with me as well, Sky did. <clears throat> um, it was just me and her old man. And it would be like, James, do you know a, do you know a Bricky? Or do you know a Sparky? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just make the call. And I'm like, hang on a minute, I'm missing the buck here. So, then lo and behold my company grew like and I was like I just mate I was making like every week mate like there's 20 grand going in the bank account I'm like fuck it was it, it was crazy it was crazy and like I turned over re- I was only had it for like a year and a half and then that's when, <clears throat> that's when the wheels come off and phew, that's when shit started going crazy why um mine and Sky's relationship was breaking up um and I, to be fair, mate, I was always out. Like I'd go at six o'clock in the morning, and I wouldn't be back till like eight o'clock. Have a quick scran, shower, bed, do it all again. I did that for like a year and a half, and then just the relationship broke up, and I was like frustrated because she she wasn't getting her needs met, all the kids weren't getting their needs met, and I'm like, well. I'm fucking providing here. We're in a lovely big house. Yeah. What more do you want? That yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah you've yeah, got yeah, fucking yeah. nice. We like yeah. anything you want. We've got it. Yeah. Flawed thinking, isn't it? <clears throat> Stupid. Yeah. And um, no, it, only if I took like two days off or maybe a one day off a week or something like that. But no, it's just constant. Um, but that's what I'm like. I'm really obsessive when it comes to if I'm doing something, I'm fucking laser focused on it. And like, <clears throat> I won't leave that. Like I'm constantly on that black pairing, bam, 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 to him. But um, so we broke up, um, and then that's when I went right, and there were some really dark times, really bad times. So like suicide, attempted suicides, all that kind of shit. How recently? No, mate. This was like 2017. Yeah, 18. relatively recently. No, no, it's, nah, it's, it's good. I'm good. No, I'm just. I'm. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. Not, I'm not saying it's like fucking. Okay. Good as a time ago, you know. Yeah. So. You think how fast the world has moved since COVID? Yeah, yeah. mate. Yeah. And I like I had access to things that were. Obviously, from that old life, with those guys, I had things that were buried. You know, got dug up, and I'm looking at it in the face. And stuff like that. no bullshit. Like mm. wrote letters out, fucking that's it, I'm done. All that kind of stuff. Pissed out my head. Just at my nan's garage looking at this thing and Yeah. How did you get out of that hole? What turned that around? So it got to the point where I couldn't do what I wanted to do. So I was trying to look for other other ways. So obviously hanging was one and it's a weird sensation right 
to do that and then hang yourself. But then just before you sort of black out or whatever, all that, all that tension's been taken up and you put like your legs go first. Like my legs used to go numb all the time. Like when I was doing it and it became a self harm thing. I didn't have the basically. I didn't have the balls to do it. Ah, so you you take you head in the noose. You you would put yourself to the point where yeah, as far as you could take push it. it. Maybe just maybe I would fuck up. Yeah, and it happen. Yeah, that's that was my mentality in it all. So it was kind of like a self harming thing that I was doing. Yeah. Hopefully, it would have fucked up, and I got it wrong. So that was that. So a buddy of mine realized what was going on knew what was going on and he was like look you've been about been around the bike club stuff before which i had done um it's obviously associated with them and it's like look there's a party um somewhere um up kind of where your accent is and um we you know do you want to come to this party with me it's a bikers party yeah yeah all right okay we'll go went up there and a one percent bike club, worldwide known club, and when you say one percent bike club, what do you mean? So, in the MC world, motorcycle club world, you got you got normal clubs, so like an MC, yeah, or like an MCC, um, or like a batch pa- like a backpack uh, back patch club. The difference between a normal back patch club without the one percent, the one percent is like they are the one percent of people that don't agree with like the law that, you know, they're, they're completely gone and they're the clubs that like, you're not to fuck around with. And I'm not even going to mention, like I could sell it. I could, I could ask you name a motorcycle club. Go. Oh, you got the hell's angels. Right. So that's one, one percent club. UK one, which is another one percent club, which is I think the ex military. I don't want to say the name. Oh, yeah, I know that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe a bit of a fluffy one, but from the thing I've heard, it's like, my God. No. Uh, but, uh, no. Nonsense. So, like, yeah. the worldwide one. So, like, you just mentioned a, a main club. Yeah. I was part of a different club, mm-hmm. but they were they didn't get along at all. What about Invictus? So, I've heard about them. Um, ex Bootnecks and Power Edge. Yeah. Yeah. Heard about them. Affiliated with another worldwide club. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, the club... Didn't take my fancy. Oh no, did it not? No, <laughs> God no, for the things I heard. No thanks. I'll be honest, mate. So I, I was I ride a bike, mate, to enjoy it. Well yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it took the ex- it took the enjoyment well, out of it. That's not mate, something I need is to step back into one of those kind of organizations. But you can see though how many people exactly, like exactly, us exactly what I was talking about earlier. I can exactly see the appeal how you can get pulled into it. Exactly. Because it can be exactly that thing that you're looking for. As I said earlier, community, brotherhood, set, like that brotherhood, tribe, belonging, a clear understanding where your social status yeah. is, a clear understanding of what you're supposed to do. Yep. Probably have, they pro- I've never been in one, they probably have things like, you know, targets, and obje- I don't mean targets, like, well, I don't mean targets, but I mean like objectives and missions and, yeah. you know, this is what we're here for. This is, yeah. A lot of them yeah. would be premised on support of the community. Yeah. You know? be premised on yeah. support of the community. I mean, Hell's Angels is one of the things they do, right? Yep. Hey, we support the community and they'll be out there doing all these hell and other stuff going on. But I can see exactly yeah. the appeal. Yes. It is, it is, I won't... It's the same kind of thing that would draw people into criminal gangs. Exactly the same. First, well, the same kind of thing. It, they are. Essentially, they are. They all are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, even if you're not a 1% club, you're still affiliated. If you're an MC with a backpatch club, you still got to be affiliated to a one percent club, do you? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, mate, I did not know that at You've all. You've got to have some sort of affiliations, or if you don't, you'll piss the wrong people off, and you'll just get fucking run over. Anyway. Yeah, I got a friend who I actually met in the circuit, not one of the pedo ones, and he. <laughs> I can imagine the back he... patch of the pedo club. <laughs> <laughs> he um, he was telling a story. He came back at the pit. Like, he came off leave, and he's a biker. And uh, I wasn't a biker at the time. And he, he basically said this story about how he, what, he was a bit naive, yeah. wanted to set up his own 
group yep. riders had their own cut on like yep. the first time they were out. It was only like three of them, maybe. And they were out for the first time in like, whatever day it was, and they got fucking stopped. I'm like, who the fuck are you guys? Where was that? Say? What is this? Uh, it was Scotland. Scotland. Blue, Blue I, don't, I got mm. no idea. I got no idea. Yeah. Was, but basically, you got. It's all you. No, son. Not happening. Get that shit off and fuck off. Yeah. And, like, and that was when he realised, oh, there's more to this than just getting a patch on a stuff. You're yeah, like right? wild hogs. I, uh, <laughs> that yeah, film was. <laughs> Gonna go ride right yeah, bikes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's horses for courses. Like, I'm not going to knock the MC world, right? What happens in the MC world is is bullshit. And it's a lot of bravado, and there's a lot of people probably that they think they were some boy back in the day, and now they've hit 50, 60 years old, and that's all they've got to cling on to. And really, you're just an old dude at the end of the bar sniffing coke at three o'clock in the morning, top bloke. Mm. You you go big shags, you know. Hey, the uh, the football hooligan community is exactly the same. Well, there you go. You know, these hardcore football fan supporters, a lot of them are exactly the same kind of people. Yep. Exactly the same thing. In though, in in those circles, for exactly the same reasons, you'll find the same people in the 1% clubs and in the criminal gangs. Yeah. Like, they're part of this thing. And in that thing, they feel a bit special, especially in the football hood inside. It's just it's fucking embarrassing of all of those things. It's embarrassing. Yeah. You know, 50, then, 60 year old guys think you, that the the club they're supporting, that is the be all and, you know, bl- bl- blood and honour. It's the be all and end all. Yeah. Nothing else matters in the world. And they're yeah. there in every game, way or not. And they're yeah. smashed and cocking themselves up and scrapping and all the chants and fucking. But then you've got, you got, um. But you can see where they get drawn in. And then where. It, and why it's hard to leave. It depends how you leave. <laughs> um. The um, so yeah, I joined. So I was I hang around for a, a, a worldwide one percent club for a bit. Then um, I started prospecting, and uh, so what that's, do you mean? so prospecting is like before you get patched in. So you're basically a trainee. Okay. But then I use the word trainee very loosely. You are a fucking bitch. You're the crow bag. All the shit jobs. All the shit jobs. Like what? What are the jobs an MC would get, can have to give you? No, mate. You can go over and I mean, fucking wipe give, and, Yeah, Mate, honest, honestly, bro, like, I, I hadn't, haven't seen it, but back in the day, like, <laughs> back in the day, a biker in, like, the prospects would get filled in, like, proper filled in. And then one, I remember one geezer at a club night telling me that he got dragged through a fucking fire, like, t- feet tied to a, fucking back of a bike and he fucking dragged through a fire um it's probably a bit different now but um like if you were a club member and you're like just been for a shit wipe my ass i would have to do that Mm -hmm. but it doesn't happen but that's the level of like fucking shit you have to do Mm -hmm. um and obviously depending on what beef you've got going on at the time or what the club's beef is at the time guess who's going to fucking do all that shit so if you've got a war between clubs and you're an ex-military guy that's mm. got something a bit about them and done some, I would say, not alley, but did some okay shit. Did stuff. Did stuff. Um, You know, to next, compared, say, myself to the next prospect who hasn't got a fucking clue which day a week it is, and you're telling full patch members, right, and they're asking you, what would you do here? Well, I'll do this and I'll do that. I'll do that. Oh, why is that? Oh, because then and that, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like it became used, I would say, very easily, and probably did some stuff I really shouldn't have done. Um, yeah, but the whole way through this, mate, I was a lost. Like at that point, I've just gone from almost blowing my face off and hanging myself on a reg to oh my god I'm part of something now part of this brotherhood this is fucking awesome yeah fucking right I'm going to do everything I can to protect this fucking right I'm going to show up to every club meeting I'm going to be early I'm going to go on every club trip all this bearing in mind never had a fucking bike license in my life 
even at this point? No, I've never had a bike license. <laughs> I've had three. Is that ha- not a prerequisite to join an nah. MC? Yeah, no. Do you know what the only? Do you know what the only? I've had three Harley Davidsons. The only fucking in in a one percent club, you've got to have uh, a, 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 motor, a Harley Davidson. But I know, I know in the HA you've got to have a Harley, and I know in the Banditos you've got to have a Harley. So Bando, Banditos aren't really around here anymore. But um. Yeah, you've got to you've got to have a Harley, and it's got to be over a certain CC. So I had three in my time. Never had a license. No license. And they don't care. And when you were out on rides anyway, you fucking tape up your number plate anyway. Did the police not do anything about that? Who's going to stop a fucking twenty, thirty bikers? Yeah, all all fucking tasty. Well, I say all tasty. All up for a scrap. Probably off her heads on fucking God knows what from the night before. <clears throat> no one's going to stop here. We used to run red lights, fucking roundabouts. You just cut the traffic off at roundabouts, stop the traffic at roundabouts. Yeah, I was, funny enough, I just coincidentally was in Scotland and I was driving somewhere. Can't remember, like, out in the sticks. No, it wasn't that out in the sticks, but we were trying to go to some tourist spot. Anyway, long story short, like coming up to your junction, then this fucking bike came screaming around the corner. If I'd been going any faster, it would have knocked him off. Mm. Came screaming around the corner, whew, slams on the brakes in front of me. And he was, and then basically, like you said, 20 or 30 bikes came before him. He was just stopping the traffic. Yeah. You know, like the, yeah. the, um, in front of Rhea Marker and you got for yeah. the run in the military. Exactly in front that. of Rhea he was doing that, stop the traffic. Where do you I think? Like, I was fuming, mate. And then I seen them all around the corner that, okay, I'm not going to be fuming. I'm not going to say anything here. I'm just going to leave him go past. But also, what if I'd knocked him off? I'd be getting filled in. <laughs> yeah. I'd be getting filled in and it wouldn't be my fault. Yeah. Do you, where do you... F- right. All of this stuff, right, and the hierarchy and structure and everything of these bike clubs, where do you think it's come from? It's come from the fucking military. Mm. If, mm. You, if you look back far enough, far enough, the first bike club was all... I think it was um, a bunch of ex-US Marines come back from Vietnam or something like that. I think it was probably even before that. Must have been before that. Had they, to be. There was well, bike club. There was, there was bike clubs in the fifties. Oh, no, because of that fucking new film, isn't there? What's his name? Oh, yeah, but it Tom Hardy. Shit. I heard it shit. Eh, I quite liked it. Oh, of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it shit. There was but, bike clubs in the fifties, okay, yeah. mate. Yeah, yeah, fair. Maybe before that. So anyway, maybe, yeah. yeah. So, like, it's all fucking military based. So it's good structure. It's it works, but it's just all for the wrong fucking reasons. So yeah. Um, I cut my teeth doing that. And then I got, this is when my life started to change. And I was like, this is it now. Turning back. No turning back, sorry. I had a knock on the door from two members of the police in, in civvies. And I'd just come back from a club night. So I'm wearing all my gear. Hadn't been to sleep. Oh, it was an MC club night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Call it church. So um, I was fucked. Like, hadn't been to sleep. Mangled as fuck. So where are you living now? Down there, but you're living on your own. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, my bike was parked right outside the the door. And these guys, so oh, Mr. <coughs> James Hamilton Bing, are you um, you right to talk for a minute? Yeah, who the fuck are you? Oh, we're so and so and so so from um, basically they're like the gangs division of the police. Mm. And um, he goes, we got a, an Osmond warning here. I've never heard of that. I was well, what's an Osman warning? Well, basically, we have significant intelligence to report that there's been threats made upon your life, and we've got a duty of care to tell you this. Now, I'm not going to mention the club names, yeah, yeah, but he's yeah, like, yeah. we know there's a gang war going on between X Club and Y Club. We know that you're part of Y Club. Is that correct? I said, what are you on about? I haven't even got a fucking bike license. I'm there in my fucking car, right? <laughs> and my fucking Harley's parked literally from me to you away from the fucking the door. So that's t- we on a power. I don't even fucking ride. We on a- and the bloke laughed. And he's like, come on, James. I was like, what do you want me to say? And he's like, well, um, you don't, we just need to get this over and done with. And I was like, okay, keep going. And he rattled on shit. And he goes, right, we need you to, can you sign it so you've had it? And I said, do I need to sign it? And he said, no. I said, is it probably best if I have a, you know, do I need to seek legal advice? He goes, no, no, we just, you, are you going to sign it? No. If I don't need to sign it, 
Bye. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on at the time. And, yeah. Like, they're fucking not stupid, the old Bill. They knew, I think, personally, they knew, and probably so does the club know, who was up to X, Y, and Z at that time. So I think, potentially, it was maybe like a bit of scaremongering. <clears throat> oh, so it was a bluff. I think so. <clears throat> yeah. Because at the time, um, that other club, you know, there is some taste, there's some real tasty members on them. And do you know what? Some of them actually now, to this day, I'm actually mates with, mm. despite what's gone on or whatever. And um, one of them did actually tell me that, you know, there is, there's something going on and you need to stop. But so I don't, I don't know if it's kind of tongue or cheek or anyway, mm. whatever. I never mm. got a visit and, you know, um, thanks guys <laughs> for, for not coming. Um, but uh, <laughs> it wouldn't have ended well. It wouldn't have ended well. Um, so that I was like, fuck. So I went back to the club and I was like, this has just happened. And then there was another full patch member <clears throat> that got the same detail. Like, fuck. Full patch member means so they're a full fledged member. Full fledged yeah. member, yeah. And me and him got along quite well. And I was like, fuck, you know, Jen. I was like, yeah. I was like, okay, right. So, um, I was like, look, you know, like in my back of my head, then I'm like, I need to watch out. And bearing in mind, mate, I'm not going to say where the clubhouse was that I was affiliated, well, one of the clubhouses I was affiliated to, but it was like running the fucking Gortland home from one county to another county. Mm, mm. I remember almost getting fucking, um, it's called Skittled. So bowling, ball, Skittles. So <clears throat> you'd get fucking knocked off your bike. A car, by a car. Car, bike, whatever. And it's quite a funny moment, actually, because um, they were waiting for me at the petrol station and they seen me and I've got this fucking helmet on with fucking speakers and that inside it and I've got my music on and I'm doo, 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 yeah, going down the road and it's pitch black and one of the, so the some other club members from my club are in, in the car behind. And I just see like loads of flashing lights and stuff. And I'm looking behind and I couldn't really, because obviously the main headlights, I couldn't really see what was going on. So I just carried on riding. Got all the way to my front door and they come up behind me, so my lot, and they go, you fucking idiot. What's the matter, mate? Do you know who fucking happened back there? No. Did you not see all those fucking bikes? No. So behind me, there's me, loving life, going down the road. <laughs> <laughs> and there's fucking blokes and that trying to, they're on bikes trying to knock me off. And then the cars basically squared it all away. Jesus Christ. Yeah, mate. Someone, unfortunately, you know, it got to the point where um, things were getting really bad. And I remember saying it, um, someone's going to end up copping it here. And unfortunately, someone did. Mm. And looking back on it, um, and it was not, it was from a different club. It was from the other, the, the rival club. And to be fair, mate, like it doesn't need to get like that. Mm-hmm. And it's really sad that it did happen, but it, it did happen. And it was quite horrific from, from what I've heard. It's just really sad, mate, that people want to be a part of something and find that brotherhood. But it's just all for the fucking wrong reasons. And it costs someone their life, you know. And that only happened a couple of years ago, mate. It's really sad. Mm. But that could have been me. Easily been me. Or that could have been easily me involved in that. Easily. Tell me about, tell me about Black Baron. So, after changing my life around and sailing and all that kind of stuff, and um, sailing, yeah, yeah. So sorry. So I fa- I found a sailing charity. No, don't say the word because I'm going to slate it. Okay. Then, yeah. Really, I've never ever been involved in, and this is why I fucking hate charities now. I had this story behind me. And then I've come to them wanting to be fucking change my life. Not I'm not taking away what they do, and they do probably help a lot of people, and they do change a lot of lives or whatever. However, when you bring someone in that's got a past like that and is open to speak, speak about it, and you use that person as a poster boy to the point where you are no fucking longer needed, big lad. Fuck off. Literally. What do you mean? Literally that, mate. Literally that. Got brought in the office. Got given a job full of fucking... I don't know, 
a month, went on a trip, and I pulled something up. One of the skippers was, was pissed out of his head, basically. And um, <clears throat> I basically took it to the hierarchy and said, look, this isn't right. So, hang on, were you there, you were working for them? Yeah, so I basically was working there for them, yeah. So I went, started sailing. and On I was their a, trips. On their trips and everything yeah. like that. Started doing my courses, got my first couple of tickets, like Day Skipper and that, and PB2 and all that kind of crap. And then they brought me on as their sort of poster boy, social media kind of guy. And then I went on a trip. What, so what were you doing? I don't understand what you're saying. That you So like doing... I was promoting them on... Okay. on social medias yeah. and all that kind of stuff and being a bit more of a, a face to it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I was doing that. I was getting employed to do that. And um, yeah, so basically we went on a trip and there was a massive breach of safety, huge breach. And I pulled people up on it. And then I got questioned, basically it got flipped on me. And then I had the hierarchy phoning me up. What's the crack? I'm not going to fucking lie, but obviously someone said something, so now I'm going to tell you the actual dit. Got halfway down the back, back down to... What was the breach of safety? So there's a lot of drinking. and This is while they're sailing? Uh, no, the night before. Yeah. But there's a duty of care. That how big was the ship? <clears throat> big. Um, I can't remember how many metres. I'm not going to go into details, mate, because no. it's going to slate the charity. No, no, Everyone will know who it is. No, I probably do anyway. But um, the there was a lad that got kicked off by a skipper who was pissed out of his head, and this lad was like, I remember coming up to him on the on the pontoon. He was like, "James, mate, where the fuck am I going to go? It's two o'clock in the morning. Bear in mind, everyone's gone out on the piss in the UK or elsewhere. In the UK, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where the fuck am I going? How am I going to get a train? I was like, mate. <clears throat> fuck him and I spoke to the skipper of the boat that I was on and he he completely agreed with me and I was like look get yourself on here because um, I was like the second in command of that boat um, get yourself down bedded down here and then we'll square it in the, in the morning <coughs> Captain Dickface was like you've gone behind my back you've fucking un- you've undercut me you know you've undermined got- me yeah, yeah all that yeah, yeah, yeah. brother where the fuck's this kid gonna go at yeah. two o'clock in the morning you've got a duty of care have we not yeah uh, so, so the uh, so the organisation found out. All nice found out. Well, Captain Dickface um, reported me and spun a load of shit. Um, the main gaffer phoned me up. I told it to him straight, and uh, everything was sweet. I thought, okay, cool. Got halfway down, he's like, "Yeah, by the way, we're not going to need you." And, he, and funny enough, we had a film crew on board, and they've been following me through my process uh. from day dot. They filmed me. They brought me across to the big boat. They filmed me whilst we were sailing. <clears throat> I gave it the fucking speech. It's amazing. It's changed my life. Literally, next um, next berth we stayed in, the next uh, port, I think it was in Portsmouth, we landed at. Got a phone call. Yeah, we're not going to need you anymore. Wait when you get back. Oh, my God. I was like, are you having a laugh? So that was that. But there was a huge... And funny enough, that person's no longer the... Um, he's no longer the... Um, director of the charity because there's a few people that left high ranking people as well people that did some alley jobs as well they all left as well um and there was a massive conflict of interest between the charity and him okay massive conflict of interest i'm not going to go into it but there was and um all of a sudden he's um no longer the director so yeah, just well, used. Not all charities are like that. Not all charities are like that, but from my experience with charities, sign you're not going to convince me. <laughs> <laughs> sign po- China. Sign, sign posted and just it, red tape. Like I said to you before, it's all red tape. So Black Bearing now is, is something that I founded, and what I want to do is a club using the the biker MC structure, which is out the neg without the negative stuff in it take that take that structure put the veterans in it filled with health and well-being fitness how to look after your body all that kind of stuff positive po- like m- maybe even a podcast mate something like that you know Listen, don't start a fucking war mate whoop whoop <laughs> <laughs> 
doesn't. There may be only one of me, but I'm feisty. I'm feisty. <laughs> I'm sweating. I know, it's warm in you. Um, no, like, you know, imagine being a part of a club where you paid a subscription for like £20 a month and you've got, coming to a members lounge, you've got a trusted lawyer, trusted med- uh, mental health team <clears> that only answers to us, to Black Bearing, that are qualified to do this. Um, so like I said all the seminars and stuff like jiu-jitsu seminars we've even got it mate I've, I've been sent a video tonight from one of my lads and he's done like this is what it's going to be like like online coaching all that kind of stuff so that's what you're getting for your online bit imagine so we've got chap in the bike clubs you've got chapters so say let's say one in Cornwall one in Exeter one in Portsmouth bam 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 all the way over the world uh, of the country and the world <clears throat> exactly the same but Black Baron. So why you have could, you called it Black Baron? It's a weird one because one of the lads, Joe, he very came, unique name. I'm not. Yeah, not no, curious. Joe came up with it, right? Uh, a mucker of mine who's a rifleman as well. Uh, he's up in the north. He owns a um, surveillance company as well. He he came up with the name, but it's weird because we've um, what's the word deciphered it differently. So uh, it's black bearing, and I think black bearing is. You've in, interpreted it differently. That's yeah, the word yeah, I'm yeah. looking for. Black, as in dark, bearing, weighing down on you, black bearing, that kind of stuff. Yeah. He interpreted black bearing, as in you don't know where you're going, bearing in a compass or something like that. Uh, okay. So it's quite good, and it's. I think it's weird how it all kind of comes together, mm-hmm. but just means different things. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's on the online presence. So let's just say you've got Exeter chapter and I've got Cornwall chapter. You could go onto the online members or even Glasgow. You can go onto the online members portal and go, right, I fancy a holiday in Cornwall. Well, I know Black Baron have got an Airbnb down there. All right, okay, I could tap up one of the brothers there. Yeah, cool, nice. So you could come from Glasgow. Let's see what they're up to this week. All right, they're going co-steering. They're going kayaking and they're doing something else over the weekend. Brilliant. I'll come down for that, or vice versa. You know, you can you can go anywhere, any chapter you want, whatever whoever's going on, you yeah. can pick and choose what you want to do over the weekend. Some of it's, you know, free. We can go onto the fucking beach and do a circuit. That's free. Your your monthly subscription goes into a pot, and then that will basically be, lads, I want to go. Uh, James, um, it's so it's Dave from Liverpool chapter here. Can I take the lads fishing? Okay, how many lads you take? Oh, we're going to take four or five lads fishing. We've got a boat sorted. Just need to rent rent the boat. Yeah, okay, cool. Send me the details. I'll speak to the geezer. Invoice, bang, I'll pay for it. The lads go fishing for the day. Or it could even be... Who are you targeting with this? Veterans, emergency service workers. Oh, you said brothers. Men only. Oh, sorry, brothers and sisters. Okay. Sorry. No, I'm just checking. I'm just yeah, asking sorry, questions. girls. Um, and then you've got you know, Joe Bloggs that's maybe his washing machine's just gone fucking tits up and he's in a studio flat in London and he can't afford to scratch his own ass. But he's part of Black Baron. Okay, cool. Show us proof, mate, or whatever that the washing machine's fucked. Yeah, okay, cool. New washing machine. Curry's will we'll deliver uh, we'll get it delivered. So where's back. the crossover with the MCs here? Of on, on the positive side, is this kind of stuff that an MC would do? Help a brother out in need like that. That's the speech you would probably get when you join. Mm. 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 It's very political, mate, in that. And what's the problem you're trying to solve or the gap you're trying to plug? Trying to take... I'm not trying to take anyone away from anything. If you want to be a part of that life still, or whatever, you crack on, mate, that's the life for you. But what I've created is a another club. It's not a bike club, it's not an MC club or anything like that. It's just a normal club where instead of you going, oh, I need to be a part of the brotherhood. Okay, boom, I'm going to go into the motorcycle clubs because this is what it's all about. There's a different path you can take, mate. You can go on this path and join Black Baron and do some really positive stuff. You can be still part of that. How do you substitute the hierarchy and the sense of purpose and all that into it? Try and word that differently for me. Um, So one of the appeals, you know, one of the things that people miss when they leave and one of the appeals of these these um, unsavoury kind of organisations or cultures you can find yourself in have is that 
they seem to provide a new tribe for you, a new real close knit community of people who are. And they will look out for you, and, and you look out for them, and and they're your new family, mm-hmm. and a sense of purpose as part of that. Um, and that's kind of the attraction to it. Will Black Bear be able to do the same thing? Yeah, hundred percent. So, why do you take that path? Adrenaline. You might get in a row. All that kind of stuff. Being like you said, being part of the brotherhood. We all miss that adrenaline. So, don't go down that road where you could potentially end up in jail or fucking killed. Come to that road, and this is what we're saying about our monthly subscriptions. Once the money keeps building up, <clears throat> so we've got big ties in Croatia with a firm. Well, I'm not going to say because someone will try and pike it off me. Um, <laughs> do all the tactical training, all that kind of stuff. So all the stuff that you missed and you probably would love to go and do, or maybe didn't have the chance to do. I'd love to learn how to fucking abseil down a building and go through the fucking window. I've never done that. Obviously abseil, but I've never gone through the window. I, we could do that over there. What about CQB? Remember the old Op Samson um, video? He drives down the road, mm-hmm. targets pop up, and he's like, with the MP5K. Mm-hmm. We could do that in Croatia. All that kind of shit. So imagine you've paid into the system, into the black bearing system. Then I can turn around and go, we've got enough money in the bank to go, right, let's go to Croatia. Let's have a week of range packages with... Do I say Celebrity SF? The new the new breed that's coming in? Can I say it? Can uh, say that. could say that. Okay, some really alley dudes that are really cool guys. Yeah? Have them come over, do some fucking training, put that on. So, like, your basic weapon handling. Day two could be doing it with CQB. Day three, we could do some contact drills. Not just saying we'll do all of that, but that's this is the stuff that we can do. And it's all in a done, the really good environment, safe environment. You get your little fix. And there's no bullshit at the end of it. You're having a barbecue and a beer with all your boys. So Airsoft you, it, is going to love you. They're not coming, mate. I'm really sorry. <laughs> so, How uh, are you going to stop the airsofters? No, what about it's an airsofter yeah. who's ex-military? Yeah, you can come, bro. I would not be letting them in. <laughs> can I? Can I? Can I be I'll really? Be like, can I be really I'll honest? Be like, go on. I gave it a go. Oh my god! <laughs> I got banned within like a month. <laughs> Kids weren't showing up, mate, because their mum said that no, because I was too aggressive. Heaven forbid! Call your hits, Heaven forbid! Heaven forbid! You're aggressive in a war game. Yeah, I gave it a go, mate. I gave everything. A I go. can see the appeal. I can see the appeal. There are actually military really enjoy the airsoft. I can see the appeal. I mean, those guys are not those guys me. at Sterling Airsoft. It's like they me. are like, I would. I would not be happy even with a 2-2. Like, never mind the airsoft thing. If I went down a range and it was the point two two, no, thank you. I need something big caliber. I need to smoke cordite and, in my yeah, nostrils. Well, at the very minimum, I want 5.56. It's not even a big caliber. At the very minimum, I want something that actually used to kill people. Can I ask you a question then? What? Once, look, it's, it's, not, it's not once, it's is. This is all jacked up already. Black bearing is established. It's Don't just, put me on the spot yet. Oh, I know. Go on. Uh, would you be interested in coming? I'll tell you what. To what? I'll tell you what. Here's a fuck. I'll give you. I'll give you a break. A deal here. Once I got the fucking. So we're looking to do. So our I mean, first... it's good, mate. Can we, can we go on in? Right. Go on. So I. <laughs> um, we're looking to do our first big trip. Spoiler alert. Um, February, mid February, mm-hmm. right? If I could get you to come. As a fucking on a freebie, well, it will all be freebie anyway because I pay it's Black Bear. No, I'm, no, we, I've, I've got the time and I believe in what you're doing. And then, how about you come and do a podcast out there? I knew you were going to say that. I've got a studio. Sick. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah, but we don't need all these bells and whistles. <laughs> we just need a, you know, we can just bring a phone. We could do a live. I would pay and come and check it out. I wouldn't go and do a podcast overseas like that. It's not what I do. Well, it depends. It's a good promo. I do one on ones. Okay. In a dark room. One on two sometimes. In the dungeon. I've done one on three. But that, that's that's the whole idea. I know. Yeah. 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 Mate, I no. I, I'm definitely up for seeing. Do you think it's a good idea? Yes, from what I've heard. Yeah, from what I've heard. There's some details need to be ironed out. 
which will probably be ironed out, which I don't know about. Hundred percent. Not, there's no point going to depth it's, it's, now, but um, it's it's just in a nutshell. I way. think if you get yeah, I think if you get the it, you know it, it's it's a difficult job, mate, to try and provide what you want to provide in that sense of purpose, community try. But I've got it, mate. I've got it there. Like I've got it there. What do you mean? Like it's there. I know how to create it. I've, I've I've created it already, you know. There's six chapters ready to go, built ready to go now. Hang on, hold your thought. Two seconds. Let me go on to the. Uh... We'll wrap this up shortly. Though. This the, the uh, aircon's gone off, which is yeah. enjoy. <laughs> so Cornwall, Tasmania, Australia, uh, Leeds, Liverpool, London, Glasgow, Cambridge North. Why have you chosen these locations? Croatia. No. These are people that are reaching out that want to be a part of it. Ah, okay. And I've put them as area reps. Yeah. So then instead of going, everything's down in Cornwall, obviously it's not accessible to everyone. I'm fucking spreading across the blanket of whole of England doing this. So you could phone up your, you could be in London, you could phone up your area rep. Mate, what are we on this week? Anything going? Or in that group, that WhatsApp group. So how do you... One of the appeals of other organisations that we mentioned is exclusivity. Mm-hmm. Not just anyone can join. Mm-mm. But there's a balance of what you're talking about because you want, you don't want just anyone can join but you also don't want to put up too many barriers so that the right people don't even bother trying. Right? Mm-hmm. How? So what? what's the element of exclusivity to it? How do you say yes or no to someone who wants to join? What's the criteria? Or if you haven't defined that yet, not a drama because generally you're talking blue light services and military, right? Yeah. Where does the line for blue light services stop, mate? If you're in a fucking vehicle and it's got blue light on top, you you're good to go. <laughs> okay. So at the end of the day, <laughs> you you are though, because at the end of the day, these people save lives, don't they? Yeah. yeah? Got it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, got it. But no, mate, it's not just it's not just all the bells and whistles. I'm not criticizing. Shit. No, no, no. no, I'm no. Just, yeah. Why do I struggle that word? And I'm not criticizing. I'm not criticizing. I'm just sort of in my mind. All these yeah, questions yeah. come in, and you go. And the reason I ask them is because lots and lots and lots of really motivated, driven people um, have really great ideas, and most of those great ideas never come to anything because they, they haven't got the effort, they haven't got the motivation, they haven't got the inclination to go and, go and do it, they haven't got the knowledge to be able to get them off the first step. You obviously have, right? You're, you're already likely to smell ahead. All the experience you've got, bad experience and good experience, business experience, kind of all the stuff you haven't talked about as well, mm. business-wise, you know, you, you've got that there and, uh, and you understand what it's like to miss those things like tribe, community, sense of purpose and all those things. And, and the thing is with those things, yep. especially with the sense of purpose, these can't be all... These can't be artificially, um, artificially created. It's not like, hey, um, oh, I need a sense of purpose. I'm missing this in my life, and um, Black Baron's going to give it to me mm-hmm. because Black Baron's a club. I'm going to be part of that. Mm-hmm. Black Baron has to, yeah, provide this thing, this yeah. this like holistic service mm-hmm. to its members. Yep. And each member is a diverse, diff- they're different, they're diverse, not everyone's got the same needs, but no. the overarching thing needs to be of such a high quality. Yeah. Um, well, this is why I'm trying to go to... Well, in such yeah. nuanced and subjective things. Yeah. It's a fucking hard job, mate. I think, and I'm going back to the beginning, I think everything that's fucked up in my life, and the goods and the bads, right, has led me to this point here now. Mm-hmm. I should have done this fucking years ago. However, I didn't have the story to back it. I know, speaking from experience, just heard it, I needed a place like this. I'm creating that fucking place. Mm. It's already starting to create. It's, it's there. I just need to start pulling the pin on a few things. My network is good. I've got a good, strong network of good people that know what they're talking about. I've got the fucking experience as well to do it. Everyone's buying into it. I haven't met a single person. This is no word of a lie. I haven't met a single person yet that's given me a negative thing on it. They, everyone said it's something. It sounds mega. It sounds it, mega. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I suppose I'm just. Yeah, no, 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 brother. That's fine. Testing, no, testing fine. The, the 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 firmness of the the no, foundation, it's, brother. It's firm. <laughs> so can you listen? I've gone from all of this shit that's gone in my life, and there's a lot more, mate, back there, and. There's stuff obviously I can't talk about on here. 
look at all the shit that I've gone through and all the fucking walls I've hit, walls that I hit, walls that I hit. I'm going to keep smashing. I've kept smashing through. I'm here today. And this is exactly what's needed. I'm going to fucking smash it. When are you launching it? It's live at the moment, right? But the subscription is probably the actual... So the main page is up. So www.blackbaron.co.uk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Drop that one in there. Um, That's what you for, mate. Sorry. All right, sweet. Um, and then I think it'll probably be at the end of this week, the subscriptions and the... Um, uh, members lounge and all that kind of stuff is there but it's, don't think it's just going to be like you know when we go away say to Croatia like tactical stuff it's not you know I want to get people that are um, spiritual come and do the retreats out there I want to do adventure training out there do you know what as well I've taken a tea with the idea of imagine doing a fucking week a little civvy seer school how yeah. how much shit, right? Look look at look at the way the world's going on at the moment, right? Well, you got the actual how many... school down there, haven't you? Well, in Cornwall, in Cornwall, we have been there, yeah. How the, recently have you been there? Uh, since it was revamped. A uh, mate of mine's the ISM down there, isn't it? Is he? Yeah. Well, hook me up. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I, I know Can't say that. Anyway, no, not, no, fuck that. Um, but the... Um, no, like in Croatia. Like, can you imagine doing like a really cool bushcraft? Like, obviously watered down to fuck. So men, I believe as well, men these days are not men anymore. And I think the way the world's going on... If, if, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. I sure. think... If someone come through that door now... Well, and when we're at home, you're at, ho- you're at home with your kids and everything like that. Can you defend your home? Yeah. Right, okay. Could you safely say that most men can? No, most men can't. But there's right. there, there's there's a there's a, there's a, there's a question a step further back in the process there, and that is, have most men got the inclination to or the motivation to or the fucking balls to defend it? Okay, so let's instill that back in them. Or once if there's a massive fucking disaster in the UK or anywhere in the world, and suddenly everything's just stopped, and now you've got to fucking fend for yourself and fend outside your home to provide for your family or whatever. So imagine doing like a bushcraft school, like two days doing basic bushcraft with um, Nick. Get his crazy ass out there. He would love that. Nick Goldsmith. Yeah. Nick Goldsmith was was guest number two, I think he was. I know, yeah, I can't laugh, sorry. Guest number two, I think Nick was. He's a gleaming boat. Number two. Hey, he's mad as a box of frogs. I love him. Yeah. He's a good bloke. Supports me quite well. He, um, like, get him out do that sort of stuff and then go like right lads do a bit of basic fucking seer stuff <whistles> off you go into the mountains yeah yeah but it all sounds mega yeah I'm bang on mate I, I get it um, I get it yeah definitely um, and you know especially with the, the military community ex-military man I I miss the alley stuff yeah, which I'm never going to get to do again oh you are because you've got black hair now baby <laughs> yeah I mean getting to do again for real now if they can find a <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy. Now, if I join up Black Bear and I find myself in fucking Ukraine in the US time, I'm like, Jesus Christ. No, Jesus Jesus no, Christ. There is more to the story, but I'm going to leave it after and I can go, hey. It sounds great, mate. It does sound great. It's just, ba- um, in a nutshell, what it is, it's just a club, mate. And it's not taken away from the charities because the char- some of the charities do an amazing job, even though some of them I fucking can't stand. I can't see why you are a charity and you've got multi, multi millions in the bank and you've got. You're so fucking tight with the money. <laughs> fucking spend it. It's for troops. It's for people in need. If I've got 50 grand sat in the bank account, mate, for Black Bear, and this, and I fucking put my hand onto this, and I'm going to be so honest with all of this, when the money starts flowing in, and I've got like 50 grand from like a month, what's, what do I work it out at? This is it. If I did it at 12 pound, right. At 12 pound, 2,500 members at £12 is 50 grand or something like that, isn't it? Is it 50 grand? 2,500 times 12. 144. Hey? No, it's not. 2,500 times 12. Hang on. 144k. 144. 144k. 2,500 times 12. Yeah. 30 grand. 
Oh, I don't like it. Fucking, mate, my maths on this podcast, because I'm thinking about my maths is actually incredible. <laughs> on this podcast, That's so good I math. have to What did you say? Two and a half thousand times 12? Yeah, it's 30 grand. For fuck's sake. So, you, if I've got 30 grand <laughs> a month... I'm Right, I'm having a new rule. Guests are allowed to ask me maths, unless, <laughs> unless, I don't know, we haven't been speaking about anything else in the previous hour. Oh my God. Oh my God. If I've got 30 grand <laughs> sat in that bank account, mate, every single month, and it's going, I'm spending that money on the blokes. Yeah. Like, I don't see any reason why you should have... It, basically, if I've got 30 grand, my mindset is, I don't give a shit about business plans or anything like that. If I've got 30 grand in that month, I'm spending a large portion of that. I'll spend at least half of it on helping blokes do something or doing something productive or going phoning up Liverpool chapter and going, you know that boat, big man? Take them fucking jet skiing. Mm. You know? Mm. Yeah. Hey, London chapter, let's go fucking do this, do that, whatever. Or mm. fuck it. Everyone RV at this point, you block that weekend off if you want. Come down, we're all down to Cornwall and we'll go and see Nuki Surf veterans. Bosh, done. Pay for a hotel for everyone. Yeah, I like the sound of it. I do like the sound it's of just, it. It's just, it's something that's needed to be done for fucking ages. I don't understand why no one's done it. There is a, so two of the main reasons, those, those bugbears about the charity say, I want to sit on millions and the big ones. There's two main reasons, right? One is bureaucracy, like unnecessary red tape. You need you need an element of red tape. You need process. You need things to be done, checks and balances. But a lot of the a lot of the charities have un, have unnecessary red tape. They have bureaucracy, right? And that's so that creates effort and time and elongated processes to get stuff done. For example, validate releasing funds to pay for something for a beneficiary. And the other reason is because they're charitable organisations. As they get bigger, it's a bigger in fundraising bigger in the amount of impact they have in, on society wherever they are then they have a lot more of a focus on them from, from the public and they have a lot more focus on them from governing organisations and so they're forced because of bureaucracy in government and bureaucracy in the way charity the charity sector is structured in general especially in the UK they have to get these lots and lots of checks and balances and proof and evidence and all of this in place to to prove to the powers that be that there's no shenanigans going on. Now, because of the way it's structured, it means that the majority of those things are bureaucracy. It could be done a lot smoother. But because the charity sector is so old and so outdated, that it doesn't get done better. So what you find is, your example, charities with millions and millions of pounds of, uh, millions and millions in funding, mm-hmm. struggle to spend it. I saw this with Help the Heroes. Help the Heroes had this exact issue. Millions and millions to spend on. The the peop, the beneficiaries that they historically would spend on and would take that money, all of it, were not around. Were, there was less of those beneficiaries existing, qualifying beneficiaries, because Iraq and Afghan stopped. So that meant that Help the Heroes, there was a, there was a point in time where Help the Heroes had all this money and they were literally couldn't spend it, and, mm. and they started changing policies and changing. And, you know, they, they they would just hand out a fucking laptop. Someone who had a problem, X Y Z. You know, they did get this benefit package. They have a fucking laptop as an example. Huh? Like laptop is not the thing that the person needs right now. There's other things that it could be they could be needing to support them on their journey out of whatever nightmare they're having. Right? I'm just using that as an example. Now um, you're interesting because you are not a charity. No. You're talking about a membership organisation, yeah. which means you're not going to be beholden to the same problems. No. You're essentially under your own steam at how you use that money, and so that means that there's going to be less of a public interest in what you're using that money for. If you want to use it to go and have a fucking crazy dwarf throne weekend in Croatia, go and do a crazy dwarf throne weekend in Croatia, you're not a charity that is there to be benefit people. Yeah. It's a different thing. Yeah, That's not to say you aren't charitable. No. No. Different terms, different, but 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 you you can be a yeah a, you know a membership organization which are charitable as, as you know yeah so um no it's, I like it's the idea, business, mate. it's a I business it's a business mate and our business is helping people yeah 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 our own yeah 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 exactly everyone's had enough haven't they really, exactly the and if you know um you know you'll set it up and if it only helps fucking one or two people a month you know as long as it keeps surviving then one or two people is enough is enough you know you only fix one or two dishwashers right. a month or washing machines mate yeah but if if it perpetuates and there is value being provided to the members, 
and they're hitting it's the right kind of value you want to provide and you get the right kind of members you want to you want to have in then fucking perfect mate and i don't know is there anything else like it at the moment i don't think so i don't think so you know so we're the first so don't fucking do it. <laughs> and it's a cool name. I like Black Bear. It's got, it's got, it's got, it's, so the, it's the logo, yeah. the That's mountain, um, represents life. Like yeah. how fucking you struggles up and down. Sword is you, the person, what you used to be, what you used to represent and all that kind of stuff. Ser- the serpent, it's um, surrounding, lapping the sword, mm-hmm. is society. Ah, interesting. Mm. Is that your view of society right now? Is it? Fuck yeah, Brady. <laughs> the serpent. Oh, mega. Yeah. Mate, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, no, um, thank you for having me. So, blackbearing.co.uk. Yes, mate. Is that the place people need to go to? Is there anywhere else no, you want to point so, at the moment? To be fair, um, there's more to come. Like Probably people have seen it already on Instagram. So, I've got every chapter that's coming in. There's a couple more that need to get set up already. And like I said, there's, there's more and more blokes wanting to do this and support their area doing it. So there's going to be fucking loads of Instagram accounts of Black Bear and the same logo. So um, the main handle for the world, Black Bear and World, which is I run, it's uh, underscore Black Bearing underscore World or World underscore. You'll find it, Black Bear and World, just to get in. Mm-hmm. Um, that, or the website, um, we've got, um, we have got a business WhatsApp number as well. So just bang on that, if not email. Everything will be squared. The email's li- uh, the website's live. It's just you can't subscribe, and there's no membership page, and there's a few more pages that need to be developed. That'll be probably next week. So it's just information at the minute. Yeah, I mean the, the like I said, mate, the team that I've got around me. I've just basically what I've done is got that network, and I've just gone bring it yeah. all together, and it's fucking working. Mega. Yeah, I'm really. Wish you the best of luck with it, mate. Thanks, Bay. Well, if I can get out for a trip, I will do it. I'll pay my way. Um, we well, won't because you're a veteran. Well, I'll hang on. What? But I'll have to pay a subscription, won't I? Oh, yeah, you're £20. Right. It's a good fucking deal, that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> I'll get you on that fucking slip of it, mate. Oh, yeah. I'll turn yeah. your head inside out. Those ears will be fucking bright red by then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think good. Um, cool. Best luck with it, dude. And, um, you know, I've been fucking, you've had a rocky road, mate. Rocky than, rocky than most. So it's good to see you in a good place and uh, motivated and doing fucking good things, you know? Appreciate it, mate. It means a lot to hear that. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Cool. Catch you, uh, Cheers catch you in Croatia. <laughs> in a bit, bro.